Up north, the journey for the championship makes its visit for the fourth time ever to Miles the Monster with the last several races bringing the field of 14 to the home stretch in the end of the season. That monster takes control of the virtual Dover Motor Speedway where tonight we welcome you to the sixth race of the season six for wide racing TJ's team series playoffs. The monster in front is only the guard for the one mile beast we're ready to encounter tonight. But you'll be safe with us here up here in the Cable and Racing Network where alongside Francisco Bacchial for the ride, I'm Kenneth Bueno. Now we have seen ton of storylines build up throughout this postseason. Dover, of course, being one of the more unique tracks to take on the 14 drivers still vying for a four wide racing TJ Team Series championship. And after Sonoma, it appears that we have slimmed down the field considerably. And, you know, we had a non-playoff spoiler winner. We'll get to that in just a couple of moments. But Dover should intensify things quite a bit. It definitely should, Kenneth. Uh, My Miles the Monster does not make friends around this place. And it'll bite you if you don't treat it the way it should be. And we've seen in the past that drivers struggle to get around this racetrack. Turns two and four are very difficult to get off of as it's a roller coaster ride. And that wall jumps out at you. But you mentioned that there's Sonoma with some chaos and with uh, championship implications going on. We had a non playoff driver win in Brandon Hawkins, number four on the season for him. But as we look at that schedule, Kenneth, getting ever so closer to Homestead Miami Speedway, less than a month to go until that championship finale. And you have to navigate Dover, Pocono, and Phoenix to stand a chance for one more attempt to go for that championship battle, which. Uh, right now is starting to look like it's going to be a battle among your top four in the standings. You see there, Lawson Field has an eight-point advantage over Kyle Benson. Ethan Fonseca's 13 back. Then you have to go a little bit of ways before you get to Jane and Porter. And then once you get to Brandon Banks and really Ryan Pandicio, that's where the gap really starts to look at large. So you look at that top four, maybe five. That's going to be exactly the drivers right now still vying for a shot at that championship, but it's go time right now. You can't waste any more time. If there's a chance where any of these drivers have to make some kind of noise or even go to victory lane to get as many points as they can, it's here and now. You're right. We have considerably slimmed down the drivers that technically have a mathematical shot at going for the championship at Homestead of Miami. And we make the predictions that maybe there will be just three, maybe just two going for the championship one-on-one -on -one when we get down to South Florida in just a couple of weeks. Brandon Banks is still within a shot at 44 points, but that is considered a long ball that he has to hit in order to get himself back into the ball game. And you look at all the drivers who have fallen through the point standings, most notably Eric Schaefer and Tyler Murray. Murray, almost a four. 100 points out of the top spotted peel just because uh, Murray and Schaefer did not make last week's race at Sonoma Raceway. Speaking of which, we had a lot of fun at Sonoma Raceway, a lot of drama. We'll take you through that in just a couple of moments, but the biggest storyline, Francisco, is the rookie Brandon Hawk and the driver leading so many laps, taking this pass against Lawson Peel on the outside, going up the hill. It was very impressive to watch Brandon Hawking getting his fourth race win of season six. And get this, a driver that has been so consistent since he's joined the series, he's had a top three in eight of his 10 total starts in four wide action. That's a very impressive stat. And this win shows just how dominant he can be. And not to mention the fact that those two, he didn't finish in the top three, but measly fourth place. But that goes to show just how fast and consistent he's been in the races he's been a part of. And if he does make that full-time effort next season, Kenneth, he's going to be a perennial championship contender. And he's proven that this season with the wins and all the success. But also a very important highlight that came out of this race was some playoff drama. We saw a couple of playoff drivers and non-playoff drivers getting into it, namely Ethan Fonseca Moreno and Daniel Michaud as they were racing past Lawson Peel, who was on the alternative strategy Michaud was, and they came into conflict with each other. They did. And it was a ton of fireworks between the two involving Michelle at Sonoma Raceway last week. Here is how it all went down. Ethan Fonseca Moreno just 11 points behind. He's looking to try and close in on his home racetrack. Little by little, closer to that 21. They're going to go up the hill. Possible opportunity for Moreno to go back to the inside. He's going to have a chance. Peel's going to be there. They're both oh, going to go too. in. All three of them go in. Lock of the brakes for Michelle. They're three wide. Moreno is spun around in turn 11. Yeah, um, I was just talking to Ethan about that. So I hate that happened. I think it was a bunch of crap. 
uh, what happened there, but I don't have really much good comments to say tonight, so. Ethan, of course, not happy with how that race ended. Loss and Peel getting a good finish out of it, but obviously remorseful at how everything went down with Daniel Mitchell posing as the lapped traffic near the end. That was all while Brandon Hawken was pulling away in Francisco. That was what our eyes were on, that fight for the championship. Ethan, of course, still looking to close in on the double-digit gap between himself and Loss and Peel. So you could argue Sonoma could have been the turning point for Ethan had he been able to get around Daniel Mitchell, but that whole situation just blew up in front of both of them. And Ethan, of course, not happy, looking for a lot of vengeance tonight at Dover. Yeah, Ethan Fonseca Moreno has had some good success here at this racetrack. And Bacayo Bueno Racing, the last time uh, we were here, was able to go to victory lane with Jaden Porter. And they need a good result from him to keep his championship hopes alive. So those two looking to make a huge strike here at a track like Dover uh, with Pocono next week as well. Uh, to be able to go and make a shot at it as well for at that racetrack, it's going to be very uh, interesting to see exactly how this pans out going forward for those guys, but they got to be able to focus here at Dover. And speaking of the history of Dover in this series, we've only run it three times in seasons one, two, and then five. This is our fourth all-time meeting with Miles the Monster in series history. And take a look back at season five, what exactly happened there? It was all Jaden Porter, the Kentucky native, pulling away after getting by Kyle Benson here at lap 38. Early in the race, Porter was able to smooth on by, and from there it just seemed like flat-out domination from Porter, able to pull away, and then by that point just strolled to what at the time was his second career for Wide Racing TJ's Team Series win. And also, too, with the history of Dover in this series, in the last two races we've had here at the Monster Mile, each of those winners, Scott Healy and Jaden Porter, went on to win the four Wide Racing Championships. So, Francisco, maybe some history on the line and maybe some foretelling we'll see tonight just based on the trends of who might win the title. I could very well spell the case. We saw that be the case with, like you mentioned, Scott Healy and Jaden Porter uh, last season. So, if you want to win the if you want to win the championship, you're gonna have to tame the monster, and that's easier said than done. But looking at the timesheets, a lot of the drivers in contention for the championship have been putting up some pretty good lap times, pretty consistent lap times. So it might tell its story here today. We'll just have to see how this unfolds after 200 laps here from Dover. And you know, really thinking about it as well, Kenneth. You know, you get these these drivers here and you look at the standings it's it's really going to get close but you also think eric schaefer eric schaefer was a championship contender that obviously he missed sonoma so he's not probably going to be a part of that championship fight but you think about his teammate lawson peel who is so considering what we saw last week out of daniel michel i think it's still a play that we could see teammates still play a huge role in the outcome of this championship whether it be alternative strategies or lane choices whatever you may have it and Drinking Bros Racing has a pretty successful resume here at the Monster Mile. Five of those DVR drivers finished in the top 10 the last time we were here at Dover, let alone with Jaden Porter getting the checkered flag. Lawson Peel finished in second, and then all the Drinking Bros Racing teammates spread around. Brandon Banks, Jesse Preeze, and even a bit of Michael Nubra able to finish in the top 10 by the checkered flag. So this team knows how to perform well, especially on the concrete surfaces when you look at Bristol and here at Dover, where Banks has been a former winner here in another league the Sunoco Cup Series and he's got a lot of skill when it comes down to these concrete surfaces that can eat the tires up. Let's take a look at Dover Motor Speedway from the overhead camera with a look at our KBRN track map with images provided by Google Earth and we had Bristol Motor Speedway be the first concrete track of the season Francisco Dover different in its own right still very difficult to drive. Very difficult to drive indeed. It looks like an easy racetrack when you see it from this angle, but when you get down there, it is a completely different. You have banking on the straightaways. It kind of flattens out and then goes to 24 degrees as you get into the corner, and then coming out of the corner, it's the same deal. It rises up and then flattens out. It's it's a, it's a roller coaster ride is really the best way to explain it, like an actual roller coaster you go to Orlando for. It's it's really something special to go around here and be successful because it it is so undulating. A lot of G-forces around here. These guys are going to have to do it again consistently all night long and hope that it's enough to win them this race and hope and for some to help them in their championship battle.
Well, for that, we've got everything sorted pre-race. Let's take you trackside and get you the starting grid of tonight's playoff outing from the virtual Dover Motor Speedway, where on pole, after seeing the top eight separated by just a tenth in practice, it was Kyle Benson who captured the pole in qualifying with a 22.646. He will have Brandon Banks in the 54 looking for his second win of the season, or rather his first of the season. He'll be on the outside in row number one. Ethan Fonseca Moreno, we knew all of the storylines coming out of Sonoma Raceway. Him and his involvement with Lawson Peel in the waning laps, well, they're both going to be side by side in row number two, third and fourth at the green flag tonight. Adam Alishire with a great qualifying effort, pretty fast Toyota Supra in practice. He'll roll from inside the top five, and Eric Schaefer makes his return to four wide action. He'll look to try and close in on that big deficit he has in points after missing last week's race. He'll be in P6. Rounding out our top eights will be Tony Kivett in the seventh position in the 76 with Jaden Porter defending winner here at Dover looking to go two in a row and capture his first win of the 2024 season. And then rounding out your top 10, a pair of Stonks Motorsports Supras in ninth and 10th. AJ Green on the inside, Colin Forrester on the outside. Jesse Prees will roll off from the 11th spot with rookie Trevor Haley in the 12th spot looking to have a good run in these playoffs here at Dover going back to 13th. Uh, we have the 53 of Kevin D'Elia with Craig Lautenslager looking to make some ground in that 14th spot. Behind them, it will be Ryan Pandicio rolling from 15th. Christopher Bishop back in 16th. Curtis Kelly going to draw from 17th on the grid with league owner Tyler Murray back in 18th place. That's row 9. Then rounding out your top 20 will be Michael Nubra and Patrick Thompson in the 88. Cody Kinsey will be in 21st. No time set for him with C.J. Munier alongside him in the 22nd position. Lance Hill will be all the way back in 23rd with Craig Rowe once again making a start here in the 24th spot. Craig Parks will be in 25th and Brandon Gillis and his 9 machine will be in the 26th spot. And that rounds out your 26 car field from the Monster Mile. And there's Kyle Benson letting the entire field roll behind him as he catches up to the iRacing official pace car. We go 200 laps here from Dover, about 200 miles since this is just a one-mile circuit. A very tough one at that. Pretty hot track temperature as we look down from Dover, Delaware. It's only 82. It could be a lot hotter, but as we roll into the spring, the summer, things should get hotter overall in general. But winds to the southeast at about 10 to 11 miles an hour. Pretty strong gusts to the southeast here at Dover as everyone gets set for tonight's race. Francisco, your biggest keys to being successful here at the Monster Mile, specifically for those in the playoffs. We know that realistically the top four, maybe top five, had a shot at getting to Homestead Miami Speedway with a good opportunity at a four-wide championship. What's at stake for them? What's most important to focus on for this race? Damage limitation and making sure you can get to the end of the race. This racetrack, you're gonna da you're gonna get damage from either yourself, from your own cause, or just something that goes on around you. So you have to be aware of your surroundings, stay out of trouble, get that car to the finish line in one in a piece, and make sure you can get a solid enough result and points race. These next couple of races for those at the top, it's gonna be all about points racing and making sure you can outscore the others. You don't necessarily have to win these races. Though how we've seen how competitive the field has gotten, it might take a win, but still, at the end of the day, you have to make sure you beat the drivers you're racing against in the points to gain that ground. And it's easier said than done. But here, like I said in the pre-race, if you hit that wall off of turn two and off of turn four, it's very hard. It jumps at you with the way the track exits. You'll see right here as they go through turn two uh, before the green flag. Look at the racetrack. Look how aggressively it changes. And you're going 150 miles an hour when you're up to race speeds through there. And it's not easy whatsoever you rise up the hill and you get a greeting with that outside wall it gets really nasty especially with the lack of space on either straightaway so if you do get involved in a crash you take someone out underneath you you probably have a big wreck on your hands with not a lot of space for avoidance that's been the biggest concern for racing at tracks like dover it is our fourth all-time meeting with miles the monster Jaden porter the winner last time we were here will we have a playoff driver be successful this time around we'll start the 200 lap marker from here at lap one with Kyle Benson and Brandon Banks, a pair of playoff drivers, to run towards the green flag for the sixth time in the playoffs. Yeah. 
A good start for Benson and Banks washes out of turn two. It's going to give Ethan Fonseca the second position as it looks like the 12 of Lawson Peel is going to lose a spot to Adam Alishire. He's going to fall back to fifth. Kyle Benson will lead him back after turn four. Benson with a clear nose ahead. Ethan Fonseca Moreno right behind. Everybody singles out quite quickly. It is typical to do that here at Dover. Very tough to go side by side, especially with the rise off the corners like you were talking about, Francisco. Some drivers already flirting with the outside wall. It looked like Christopher Bishop was at the back there getting into it with Tyler Murray, his team owner, and Lance Hill all the way at the bottom. So they're just trying to siphon themselves out at the moment. Craig Lounslager looking to the inside of AJ Green. Gonna be passed for position off or not though. He'll stay back in 11th for the moment. All Kyle Benson at the head of this field. Here comes Ethan though for the challenge early on the inside. And these two drivers are second and third in the championship. As they run right now, they would be gaining on that 12 car of Lawson Peel. The question is, who is trying to be the one that passes Lawson Peel in the points that they have that shot? And that's what this battle is about right now. Ethan Fonseca has to play patient, though. It is only lap four of 200, so we got a long one to go. And you saw he, him displaying that patience, had the nose to the inside, backed out, decided to wait until a little bit later. He'll stay right on that back bumper, though. He's forcing Benson into a possible mistake. And he looks to the inside again, this time properly. Ethan Fonseca Moreno charging for the lead early. Benson is not going to give it away that easily at the exit of turn two. They touch, and it brings Moreno further down the racetrack. He's going to keep his foot in it. They almost make contact again. Kyle Benson with a door shut on the 21's attempt at the lead. The track position matters, especially that one. The lead of the race is going to be a huge one. If you can keep the lead, obviously it'd be difficult for you to lose it. Ethan Fonseca knows that as well. That's why he wants to get it. But again, has to show some patience. It's still very early on in this race. You don't want to throw it all away this early. You know, it was a third place finish for Ethan last week at Sonoma. But like we talked about, his feelings were at rock bottom. He knew that he had a chance at at least getting second place. He knew he had a shot at at least beating Lawson Peel. There really wasn't any case to beat Brandon Hawkins just because of how dominant he was throughout the entire race. But beating Lawson Peel was a certain possibility. Then Daniel Mitchell got in the way, made it much tougher. Ethan was so frustrated after that. And it tells you that Ethan is not satisfied. Even with the podium position, he knows that he could do so much better. And the winner at Richmond earlier in the playoffs and a winner at a former concrete track at Bristol Motor Speedway this season could have his chance at another he backs out, though, on Kyle Benson. He does have Brandon Banks right behind him creeping up. So is Adam Alishire. Your top four have broken away quite a bit. And already, Francisco, a bit of experimentation. Drivers going a little higher up the racetrack and arcing it down. What's the method to the madness of driving Dover this way? Dover is a track that you can get away with diamond in the corner. You can really drive it in deep, let the car slide up as you scrub off the speed, and then straightening out that exit. It's quite really the fastest way to drive the racetrack. We've seen that a lot in real life. But as these tires wear, especially with the t with the uh, track proximity or the the track uh, changes that they made on iRacing a handful of months ago, you can really experiment and go up the racetrack. So would it be surprising to see guys joke? jump into the third or even the fourth lane at some point during this race especially in traffic like this you see guys going up to that third lane and they're really able to make some ground or hold off for positions we did have a change inside the top five eric schaefer gets past lawson field so move that 12 car at least for right now down to the sixth position and right now at least in the front of the field all things calm you see right there galia haley battling away for a spot as the 53 gets into the wall and you see the stack up it creates behind Luckily there for just about everyone, they were able to avoid serious contact and a wreck was avoided. Chaos amongst the trio of Skybox Racing drivers and here is Tyler Murray absolutely beating down the outside wall at the exit of turn two. He's going to stack up Kelly, Hill, Jesse Pries and Christopher Bishop right behind. We saw Murray going side by side with Bishop at the jump of this race, but it seems as though he's fallen back. That right front damage isn't really going to do him any favors. He'll hang by for now, but it's only a matter of time before that car starts to slow down. You really don't want to destroy the right front this early in the race just because that car really wants to surge up to where that nine degrees of banking is at the very top. They all single file out. They trail behind the Massachusetts native of Ryan Pandicio. They've got a decent gap to Craig Lounslager up ahead. So here's your top four. Adam Alishire has slid into third meanwhile, and you did talk about Eric Schaefer moving into fifth with Lawson Peel right behind. It's safe to say your top six have all broken away. Jaden Porter nowhere to be found early. A lot of strength at lap 14 for these front six. 
and Alishire is putting pressure on the 21 to try and make a move on your leader. And you saw right there, he kind of went for it, and it allows the 91 to get to the inside. So Alishire displaying a lot of racing prowess right now, trying to see if he can get his way up to second. Alishire has not had the playoffs he's wanted, and he moves up to P2. Solstice for him would be trying to get a win here to just make it better. Alishire came home 24th at Sonoma Raceway last Wednesday, and for the moment, he sits 69 points out of a championship availability from Lawson Peel. It's a really tough road. He'll have to try and go down in the next several races. He's going to look to catch up to Kyle Benson, set a lap almost a tenth faster than the 38 car. He's going to run out of turn four. We'll possibly look for the lead, but we'll back out for now. And Moreno doesn't seem to be too concerned about losing that spot. He knows that there's a longer run at stake, at least with how things are going for the moment. He wants to make sure that he can at least survive on the long run. And while Sonoma, of course, has its tire wear, has its ability to last on the long run, as here comes Adam Alishire to the inside for the lead, you really want to survive at a track like Dover because this concrete surface destroys rubber. You really do not want to be that driver that falls back just because you used up all your Goodyear Eagles at the time early in the race. Top three, nose to tail, Moreno almost shoving Benson into turn three. That was very tight off of turn two. They just kind of wound up together on the same bit of racetrack. And you saw Alishire was willing to push the issue with the 38, knowing that Benson has more to lose. So kind of put him in a, in a situation where he had to make a choice and Benson said, I'll take the P2 and give Alishire the race lead because he's not racing Alishire in the point standings, doesn't want to risk anything here on lap 18. It's five points between Benson and Moreno going into tonight. So probably if they're not able to catch up to Peel and beat him out right on the track, which they are right now, but let's say they're not, it's going to be down between those two. See if they can get second place behind the 12 for the moment. One, two, three, Alishire, Benson, and Moreno, and then the rest of them, Drinking Bros Racing, Chevrolets, Banks, Schaefer, and Peel making their statements known early, but not truly attacking. We know that especially drivers like Peel and Schaefer Francisco can hold in their prowess for a pretty long time until they actually start knocking down real fast lap times and starting to carve their way through the field. Is now the marker to do it lap 20, or do you figure here at Dover it might take a little longer uh, to put in that full process? We'll just have to see, I would say probably 25 or 30 laps. But the good thing for these two is they do have a teammate just in front of them in Brandon Banks, which he probably won't be putting up too big of a fight if they get enough of a run to get past him. And that certainly will be to the benefit of those two. Jaden Porter is in the seventh spot, just a little bit behind this group, not exactly nose to tail with them, just kind of running his own pace, at least at this point in the race. You see him just back there off this 12 car, about a second behind. As you see Porter there, he's been able to pull away from Forza. So right now he's just doing what he probably wants to, is running his own pace, not really around anybody. And at this point in the race, it's probably the safe option to do. As actually up front, we do have a battle for the top position once again. Kyle Benson got to the inside of Alisha and he was able to make a move. And now here he is going to the inside again. A crossover move by Adam Alisha. Goes back to the bottom. Almost gets into the left rear of Benson. Has to kind of back out of there in the middle of the quarter. Could allow Ethan Fonseca to make a move. You have to tread water so lightly here at Dover Motor Speedway. Especially when you run underneath the driver. Because they can just pinch you down there for as long as humanly possible. And at most times... It sends a driver up into the outside wall or just sends him into the apron. It can be really difficult to run side by side. Alishire is going to lose one. There's Moreno to the inside and out to a quick, easy pass for the 21 of Moreno. We'll see if Alishire does get eaten up by the Sharks of DBR right behind him. Has to be really careful when he tiptoes around Dover. And look at this, Benson going way up the racetrack. This is something you can do. In iRacing now with the oval refresh as Alishire strikes the outside wall. You can run up there and make considerable time. Benson, why not the progression? Why not the experimentation? He's done it so much at so many other venues in the series. So why not do it here? Benson, though, gained some time off the outside lane, but going to go back to the faithful bottom. And we've seen Benson do that throughout these playoffs. He's been one of the more experimental drivers with the different lanes. We've seen him do it just about every racetrack. And Rockingham was one of those tracks where it almost got him a race win. So it doesn't surprise me to see him go up there. But also, he's probably thinking about how he's going to hold off this 21. So he tried that lane, see how it works. And now he has a little bit of information on it. As you see, Alishire is really holding up that line. He's lost a lot of time. In the last couple of laps, it's forcing Brandon Banks to try something different as now the DBR drivers are side by side with Lawson Peel 
and Eric Schaefer as Jaden Porter's actually caught up to the back of those guys. There's Jaden Porter getting in as we look at the battle continuously for the race lead, and they have all pulled away from everyone else. We had the top six all within a cluster, at least within a second, and now it's starting to thin out just a little more. Moreno remains this pressure on the 38 car of Benson as Banks goes to the inside of Alishire. He makes the pass complete, and we're still door-to-door. -door. Eric Schaefer, Lawson Peel, and then you mentioned Jaden Porter making it a five-car race. And if he could get positions on these guys, that would obviously help his race, but help his teammate at the same time since that's the main championship leader there running in P6. And since they're single file like this, it is going to cost him a bit. You saw Brandon Banks was able to get by. That means Eric Schaefer now has to figure out a way to get past this 91. He's going to look to the inside, but he isn't able to get there by the time they get to turn three. You can see him still poking a nose to the bottom. But with Alishar running the outside, it's going to be difficult. But look at this. Ethan Fonseca found the outside on Kyle Benson, and he'll take the lead here on lap 29. Had many attempts at the bottom on Benson and looks to, to the top and well, instead Benson takes the, the lead. Benson experiments too high. He flies too close to the sun, and he gets burned. The Cheez-It car with a bit of damage on the right front. Moreno safing away with the race lead and pulling away to about half a second. So Kyle Benson found himself in deep trouble there as he had the 21 car on the outside and uh, sort of had his own medicine that he dished out to Moreno a little earlier. And Alishire, give or take, punishing a driver down low and forcing them not to use that lane. Moreno said, all right, I'll go up high. And it ended up working out for him while we watch all of these guys in synchronization hit the outside wall. A big pass here, Porter going to the inside of the Mississippi native in Peel. Can I just say respect for the English literature knowledge there with the Icarus? Yeah, that's a, that's a good reference. I I got it from Hamilton though, to be completely honest. Okay. Yeah. You see, I I, I knew about that from school, but also the Iron <laughs> Maiden song, The Flight of Icarus. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I remember the song Burn. That's why. And Hamilton, Eliz El Eliza Hamilton says. He's like an Icarus, he flew too close to the sun. Nonetheless, back to the racing action. Alishire has dropped back to seventh. We saw that Porter looked to the inside of Lawson Peel, but sort of short-lived in that essence as they looked at the 91 being the slower car. They have since have sort of lagged back from the two other Drinking Bros Racing Chevrolets, Eric Schaefer in the three, that car in the background, and then this orange and dark brown, number 54 Reese's Chevrolet. That's Brandon Banks, who finished eighth, after starting 15th at Sonoma last week on Wednesday. And while it really hasn't been a standout playoffs for the 54, you can imagine, Francisco, this is a track that he's pretty good at running normally. You know, he's never won here in his four-wide career, but he has the ability to do that against some pretty stout talent. And this is kind of a run he desperately needs. He goes into this race pretty far back from your top three at about 44 points. He's the driver that's sort of on the fence about either being in contention or just uh, floating away into the abyss. So tonight could be the statement night for Brandon Banks. Certainly needs this one to go positively for him. Well, he did see that three car rush into the mirror of his and didn't really put much of a fight. Eric Schaefer a little bit faster than him and just decided to give way and get seated into the next position. But now he's gonna have to continue looking in his mirror to see where Lawson Field is running because eventually that 12 car is probably going to get to the inside of him. He's gonna have to figure out if he's going to let him pass or try to fight that position because again Lawson being the championship leader that's exactly who everybody's really racing against right now and Jaden Porter's hoping that Banks puts up enough of a fight that he can try and get into the right lane and make a pounce and try to gain that spot on the 12 car if he can gain the track position on Lawson that's a huge game for Jaden well it took 38 laps in last season's Dover race for Porter to make an effort at the race lead this time it's a little harder in 2024 up in his sixth and still eyeing in on this drinking bros racing shot here trio he's gonna look to the inside of Peel this time a really good entrance out of turn two is all three of those Chevrolets and managed to strike the outside wall, at least in some sort of extent. Porter down low. Peel's going to fight back on the outside of the nine degrees of banking on the front straightaway. It's not going to be an easy pass here for Porter. Has to keep that patience and hope that Peel washes it way up the racetrack. He goes high up time in one and two. He's going to stay there. Porter just has to give him the space and unsuccessful on this trip on the 12. Yeah, it's very tough to make the pass on the bottom. You really have to try and lean on the guy on the outside just a little bit and force the room there or try to something different. If you're on the inside, you, it's really tough. You probably can't make a pass uh, unless you have a huge pace advantage without making some form of contact. 
or the outside car just giving you this position like we saw there with Banks. He saw the 12 car get to the inside and just kind of let him have way. You see right here does the same with Jaden Porter. So those two are able to get by the 54 rather easily to move Lawson Peel up and into the fourth position while Jaden Porter gets into the top five. So that means right now, Kenneth, four of your top five in the points are in the top five. This is the cream rising to the top here at Dover Motor Speedway. Porter, the last time we were here, led 107 of the 180 laps here at the Monster Mile to get his second career four wide win. And this season hasn't really gone his way in the way that we anticipated. We probably expected multiple wins out of the defending champ, but instead we haven't seen that. But what we did see through the late end of the regular season was a lot of top fives, a lot of top tens, just consistent runs, keeping this car in one piece and crossing the start finish line. More often than not, that was enough to get him decent track position near the end of races and got him into a pretty decent point spot. And here he is, a pivotal pass on the season four champ of Lawson Peel, moved Jaden Porter into a race high fourth. If you do recall, Kenneth, the uh, concrete race track this season had belonged to the Bakaya Bueno organization. We had Luke Knup get the victory at the Nashville Super Speedway, and then uh, Ethan Fonseca and Jaden Porter were in an immense battle there before Porter lost a little bit of tire life, and Ethan Fonseca held off Lawson Peel. And right here, Ethan Fonseca in the long run is able to jump to the lead. He's pulling away from both Benson and Eric Schaefer, and slowly but surely, Jaden Porter's starting to close the gap on your top three. So it really isn't a, sh a surprise to see Bacayel Bueno racing uh, successful here at the concrete racetracks when it's been proven in previous histories among different drivers in the different eras of this series. That's true. Jaden Porter's first career win was at a concrete track, and we know that at Dover, he's been able to do well, like we talked about from last season. BBR continuing to elevate themselves at these concrete tracks, which are in some arguments, some of the hardest tracks to drive on the oval side of things. You can, of course, put Darlington in the mix, even though it's an, only an asphalt circuit. But for all the concrete tracks that can absorb a lot of heat, they really aren't the easiest to drive, and they sort of have their quirks. There's the Canadian, Curtis Kelly, making a trip to Pitt Road. Mind you, he was in a top 15 battle with two of his other Skybox Racing Super teammates. Curtis Kelly, I believe, with an unscheduled stop early. This is 42 laps in. Not entirely sure whether this is going to be for tires or not, but it's a pretty slow pit road entry for Kelly. He'll enter his box and he'll get some service on the way. He is going to fall at least two laps down to the leaders, so a pretty tough start for Kelly. Yeah, tough start for him, and we'll just have to see how much longer the these leaders can actually go because that is obviously short of the actual fuel window. I expect the window to be probably closer to 60 laps this year. Alex Shire's fallen back to Craig Lautenslogger, who's outside the top 10, I believe, or just barely inside the top 10, as there's AJ Green and Colin Forster. So Alex Shire, who was up battling for the race lead at one point, has fallen all the way back here, has lost so much time, used up his tires early on in this run, and he is suffering in this current uh, moment in time. But I do expect green flag pit stops perhaps in the next. 10 to 15 laps at best, Kenneth, and when we do get there, it's really going to tell a lot about this race. Ethan Fonseca is able to open a two-second lead. The battle for second is really starting to close in as Jaden Porter is closing in on those two, and Eric Schaefer is really getting close to that 38, all of them pulling away from Lawson Peel and Brandon Banks, so right now it's a battle for second. And the fortuitous insight from Jaden Porter throughout that entire first run, Francisco, was really learning about what these guys are doing ahead. How many drivers did he have to beat? But how long did it take to get there? He was looking at Peel, looking at Schaefer, looking at Brandon Banks and sort of taking notes on what they were doing and how they were driving their race cars. And now that he's found a bit more space, he's had less pressure from the car right behind him. He's been able to focus more on his rhythm and utilize that experience to his benefit. Catching up to Schaefer, who in turn is catching up to Kyle Benson, slides loose out of turn two up the hill, and Schaefer with a great possibility at snagging away second. You know that Schaefer missed last week's race at Sonoma Raceway, basically has taken him out of championship contention. He goes into tonight 60 points away from his teammate Lawson Peel, who tops the standings. Desperately either needs a win or a really good finish. And so far over 49 laps, he's showing why he's one of those drivers to always watch for on the long run on short tracks. A win makes everything better. And for Eric Schaefer, that's exactly what he would want to do is go to victory lane and try to heal that damage from having been able to miss the racetrack. But you saw there while we were on board, Ethan Fonseca has caught the back end of the field. So we're starting to put some cars a lap down and getting through traffic, especially here is going to be very important. You don't want to catch them on corner. Right? You just lose a lot of momentum. 
and we'll just have to see as the race goes on how does traffic play a role in the battles and the gaps so you see right there Schaefer go to the inside of Kyle Benson it's gonna be very tight right here off the corner he hits the apron he's gonna have to check up Jaden Porter's gonna try to take the position on the outside Schaefer kind of shuts him off Jaden Porter's gonna have to back out of it but Schaefer gave him a half block there down the straightaway as he got loose out of turn two, once again, the punishment of running underneath the driver in the middle of the corner. Now it's the prime opportunity for Jaden Porter to take advantage and slide into the top three for the first time tonight. He backs out center of the corner, looking for a better exit off of turn four. All three of them loose in their own way. Schaefer, though, all over the place entering turn one. It's not getting easy for the Reaper Sim Lab. Chevrolet Camaro, but he remains behind Kyle Benson. All the while, Lawson oh, wow. Peel is catching up to this trio as Schaefer hits the wall again, and here comes Porter. Porter the bottom, and he's gonna make contact. They're on the apron, they're digging contact. Porter's gonna lose a lot of time here, and Schaefer's gonna be able to scathe away as Peel tries to take evasive action. And you remember, Kenneth, back at Richmond, Schaefer was not happy with the way he was raced by Jaden Porter. Porter got the run, gets to the inside, and Schaefer just did not give him any room. Watch here as we go into turn three. Porter slides up, but then right there, you see the three car just turn down and not give the 28 any room. That is a huge denial by Eric Schaefer. And you're right, bringing up the storyline from Richmond. Schaefer, that's sort of payback for the three car to the 28. It's going to force Porter back to fifth. And it's going to help Schaefer here because his teammate Lawson Peel is going to sit right behind in fourth. So once again, adding to the obstacles that the Kentucky driver of Porter has to get through. And that could easily affect the run for the championship. There's Lawson Peel getting a piece of the apron at the exit of four. It's going to open the door once again for Porter to make a challenge on the inside. He's going to bite and go for it. Pivots into turn one. Peel slides up high. Porter looking for the best exit out of two. Peel way up the racetrack into the marbles. He's going to let the 28 slide through for a moment. Porter's going to clear. Yeah, the 12 just lost it there in the middle of the corner. He's actually going to bring it to pit road now. So this is going to trigger some green flag pit stops. We saw a couple of other cars further back make stops. So this is going to trigger the front of the field. So when do they respond is going to be crucial. There's Alishire, who had lost a pretty good amount of ground throughout that run. So as they worked their way around the racetrack, Let's see who else decides to bring it onto pit road. The Ethan Fonseca has a three second lead over Kyle Benson as it stands now, and they're going to bring it all into pit road. Here comes Benson, who's going to slide his way into the pit lane, keeps it under control. Eric Schaefer passes him as they get to that line. A good entry by Eric Schaefer to close the gap on the 38. Jaden Porter and Ethan Fonseca stay out, so we'll see how much longer do they stay out. I think if Ethan Fonseca, if you're him, you could probably go at best another another lap on the racetrack apart from this one you don't want to pit too much later and, ev and effectively lose the race lead well here's a look at moreno as kevin delia goes for a spill right in front of him moreno slides into the pit box we have to look at whether that's going to be a pit road speeding penalty on behalf of the 21 but he came in there cooking it was a really fast entry and dover is known as one of the more difficult pit road entries in all of stock car racing and here's another look at it down the back straightaway, a healthy lead over Jaden Porter. And as he brings it to three and four, he'll hop on the brakes down that transition and it doesn't really affect him until there. It's gonna get really close, Francisco. Do you think he's speeding there? Uh, he, he, he probably was. It just comes down to the sim if they give it to him and it looks like they did not. The jacks went up on the left side, so it looks like all safe on the side of the 21. Was very lucky there, Kenneth, I think. These guys, they run so low of brake bias when they run at this racetrack that they don't really bring it back up or it's just not too high enough and then they get on the brakes and it spins the car loose and actually he's still sitting in the pit lane. So trouble, huge trouble here for the 21. Ethan Fonseca Moreno gets dealt a pit road speeding penalty. There's his teammate, Jaden Porter, who's going to get off the jacks on the left side and going to exit pit road. Another huge shunt for the California driver in search of his first ever four wide racing TJ's Team Series Championship. We'll bring in our surprise member of the booth on pit road, Charlie Byer. What happened there to Moreno? It's just aggressiveness to try and defend his lead there. Uh, jumping right in here, he, he it's it's time to make the pit stops, but in, in an effort to defend his race lead, kind of cooked in. Way too hot there. The yellow. Zone, good, we got a caution out. Caution flag is out, and there is a slow Ryan Pandicio on the track. He is on pit road. 
We'll dial up to see exactly what might have been the cause of the yellow. There were many drivers coming in and out of pit road at the time. So a lot of confusion on where exactly things went down. It appears Pandicio comes down as soon as the pace car comes out. So he's going to exit pit road right as the pace car gets there. And we'll take a look exactly how things happen to bring out the yellow. Pandicio was on pit road. We had many other drivers just dealing with their own set of stops. And then Baez Moreno comes out. He got basically saved by the bell that the caution fly came out the time that it did we'll see who exactly was involved but i can't quite tell you exactly who it is for now we'll confirm it as we get through this is a look at murray as we go under green alishire was right in front a pretty separated race here at dover wow uh, i mean for Ethan Fonseca, that's not the mistake you can afford to make. Yes, it's early, but he had the race lead. He had a pretty sizable margin, and he and he pitted just a lap later than his competition. So if he would have had a, a safer entry, as there you see the sliding car Patrick the Thompson. pit lane. Patrick Thompson, just in front of Ethan Fonseca. They exited together. wonder if they made contact. But to finish up my point there on the 21, you can't really make that mistake here. You have that gap. You have a safe advantage. Just make sure you get it onto pit road without speeding. Complete your pit stop. You have a good car on the long run, so you're just, you just got to be able to keep it going. And there you see no contact between the two. The 88 just loses it. Thompson's struggles wow. continue, and Moreno just barely gets into him. Another look here at exactly what happened to Thompson. Going through the gears, car just steps out of line, and there's Moreno. And I'm not sure whether race control is going to deal Moreno an extra penalty for unsafe pit exit. I'd imagine they'd be able to let this one slide just because Moreno was escaping an accident in front of him yeah. by Thompson. But he is going to get his lap back, albeit beneath the top 20. So a lucky break, Francisco, for Moreno. But the overaggression bites him there as Lawson Peel and all of this is going to take away the race lead. And this is what we're talking about. This is the kind of mistakes you can't afford. I mean, if Ethan doesn't have that penalty, he probably is still sitting here leading the race and has the advantage over the 12 car. But now he has to drive his way through the field. He has the car to do so, but he didn't have to be in this position. It, 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 that's what happens in these championship runs. Uh, it's a rookie mistake by the driver of the 21. Lawson Peel pitted a little bit earlier, had a bit of a safer entry. And that's why he's leading the race right now. And Kyle Benson is second. So those two are going to be there in the top two positions looking to try and now battle for the lead. So we're going to see just exactly what the 21's made of as he tries to drive through this field. He got lucky that the yellow came out when it did. Cannot get away with pit road penalties. We saw it bite Schaefer the first handful of races in these playoffs. And pit road penalties return here, but not to him. And in all of that, Schaefer is going to be third. Kyle Benson remains in the top five as he'll sneak into second at the end of all of that. Brandon Banks is going to be fourth. And Craig Lounslager with a race-high run of fifth. He had an opening lap spin at Sonoma in the S's and came away with a 17th place outing. Lounslager is, of course, one of those 14 running for the four-wide championship this season. And after riding off of several championship five appearances in the series, Obviously, this playoff format doesn't reward those who are in a final round. It's about who's best throughout the entire stint, and Lounslager really hasn't found that success. He's 65 points off of Lawson Peel. And also, A.J. Green moving to sixth place in all of that as he moves up right in front of Jaden Porter. That's exactly where they're going to stand as things settle out. We're going to be ready to double them up here at lap 65 of 200 pretty early on on our first round of green flag pit stops some more playoff drama we had a lot of guys cycle out patrick thompson bringing out the yellow right in front of moreno who was coming out of pit road just after a crucial pit road speeding penalty and like francisco was alluding to it's now going to be a back to front challenge for car number 21 is he up for the challenge or will he hang back and try to find another alternative way of getting to the top spots he's going to need those points or else, when we get to Pocono next Wednesday, he may just be either on the fence or completely out of reach, just depending on how it all shakes out. But he does have a fast race car. We do know he could be competitive with those at the front. It's all just a matter of time. 
doubled up for the restart at lap 65. Lawson Peel inherits the race lead after the pit road scuffles. Kyle Benson on the outside of the front row. Eric Schaefer and Brandon Banks make it three. DBR Chevrolet is rolling inside the top five. And as we mentioned, Lounslogger and AJ Green, the highest we've seen them run all race long. Out of four, pace cars down. Peel away first, back under Green from Dover Motor Speedway. Benson gets a good enough launch to stay in the second spot. He's going to get back to turns two, clear as the top four are able to get away as well. Single file out as Lounslogger is going to battle AJ Green for a spot inside the top five. Does not take that one away. He's going to fall into the hands of Colin Forrester as there's Jaden Porter who's trying to get back up to the front after that contact he had with the three car. We saw Porter look to the inside before turn one underneath the 13 car but decided to back out and had a smarter idea of just hanging back instead of forcing it three wide as they were rolling through the gears. Porter still looking for a good amount of momentum on car 13 who dives on the inside of that Aaron's Dream Machine number 99 of Colin Forrester. As the battle for second heats up, Eric Schaefer to the inside of Kyle Benson in turn one. Drinking Bros Racing controlling one and two. 67 laps in, Benson deals in the bumper. Schaefer slides up high. This fight isn't over yet. And here comes Banks for action on the inside of his teammate. He'll let Schaefer through, but that got really sketchy for the three car. Got sent up high, a masterful job of saving that race car before it could unravel from his fingertips. And we almost had three wide action behind them. AJ Green, Colin Forster, the pair of Stonks Motorsports teammates single out as there goes Schaefer for the attack again, entering turn three with Brandon Banks on the inside of the cheez -It car. Minister of Defense, you could say right now, holding off that second spot, and that 12 car is absolutely pulling away. Benson has to deal with the secondary threat of Banks, and he files out of line. A better decision at the exit of two to avoid washing up into the outside wall. Benson just gives him the proverbial, all right, I'll get you next time. Benson still rolling inside the top five, but big passes there, Francisco, and big statements made by Schaefer and Banks. It got really sketchy, though, as soon as that 38 car gave the three, the bumper on the rear end. Schaefer loose in the middle of the corner, but now charging hard towards your race leader. And he's trying to see if he can make a move again. Schaefer isn't in this championship battle anymore, so his goal is to try and win races. Yes, Lawson feels his teammate and is racing for the championship. As long as the three car wins the race, I think he, that's what he's always thinking about. Can I win the race? A two-time winner this season, his most recent coming at IRP. That was a pretty long while ago in the middle of the regular season. And it was him versus Lawson Peel throughout most of that race. And of course, Brandon Hawken, Schaefer able to dominate that entire race to get that W. And of course, his first coming in stunning fashion. Oh, AJ Green around. Like Moreno. AJ Green with a spill. Jaden Porter is also involved. Porter with some pretty significant damage on that right rear. And that is not gonna help his case in trying to make a run for this race win here today. I think somebody else was involved as well, possibly Colin Forster. We're gonna look and see what happened. And this happened just out of turn four. I think someone got sideways in front. As we see here, Jaden Porter to the inside, hits the apron, slides barely into the 48. You saw it there. Goes to the inside, is trying to be aggressive to gain these positions. And like I said, he hits the apron right there just so slightly, slides into AJ Green and a, both of them go around. You see Forster barely get a piece of it. But these two definitely get the worst end as far as being going around. And that's typical of Dover, Kenneth. You barely slide up, you get into the car on the outside, and both of you are gonna go spinning to the inside wall. There's a small margin of error. A look on board with Porter as he gets a piece of the apron up high into the 48 of AJ Green. Colin Forrester getting the extra piece of damage. And one thing about Dover is that you have so much banking on the straightaways, it's basically self-cleaning. When you go spinning off the corner, you are basically going straight for the inside wall. We know that very well with the Jimmy Johnson save back in 2006. The car is going to want to go down the racetrack. Here's a look from Colin Forrester's POV. Goes for the slide and then hard into the wall he goes after an attempt to save that race car. Stonks Motorsports, both of them getting swept up in this incident and Jaden Porter, the playoff driver involved as here they all are down pit road. Forrester with a heap of damage on the right side. 
AJ Green and Jaden Porter looking to diagnose whatever's going on with their race cars. And because of that crash, we know that Porter might have the least amount of damage out of the three, but it's still not good news for Bacay Al Buena Racing. You had Moreno get involved in a pit road speeding penalty incident, Francisco, and now Jaden Porter getting involved in this recent caution. Yeah, 15 minutes ago was so different with Ethan leading the race and Jaden moving his way, trying to battle for second, but now... Uh, Porter with the damage, Fonseca trying to recover. He's up to 14th at the moment. You see him right there. He's led 29 laps so far today. He's trying to see if he can get back to that top position and make up those points, especially now that Lawson Field's in the, uh, Lawson Field's in the lead of this race. If Lawson Field goes on to win this race, Kenneth, even though we do have three races to go, it still puts him in a very commanding position. It, it, it requires a lot more of these guys to try and gain that ground because you consider the racetracks we go to between now and the end of the season, those are some of his better racetracks. He's gone to victory lane multiple times at the Pocono Raceway, has been very successful at Phoenix, and obviously was very dominant in the championship race at Homestead last season despite not coming away with the title. So, And, and, he, and he's a season four winner as well. So it's no no gimme that just because you gain on him even today that Lawson Peel is going to be out of it. You have to fight him every tooth and nail that he has until the checkered flag at Homestead. You, if you're the competition, you can't afford to give him anything. You're right. This is really Lawson Peel's sweet spot in the schedule. A lot of tracks were done so well at, but not only Lawson Peel, his success at the tracks that we're going to have upcoming, Drinking Bros Racing had a lot of success at the tracks that we'll see in the next several weeks. Pocono, we know Lawson has won there before. Eric Schaefer has won there multiple times before. And then at Phoenix, we know that Brandon Banks came away with a crazy victory to get him into the championship five last season. Obviously, that was all by circumstance, but Brandon Banks is a driver that knows how to win there. He's been able to alternate on strategy. He's a pretty fast race car driver there, and so is Eric Schaefer. We know how good he is on the short tracks. And when you add a team that rolls this deep in the playoffs, even though Lawson is pretty much the only driver in contention for the championship, at least for right now. It does get very dangerous for everyone else because obviously those Drinking Bros Racing teammates are going to help Lawson Peel either stay up front or uh, just stave off all the traffic that's behind. We'll reset the field here for a restart at lap 77 of 200. Lawson Peel, the race leader, with Eric Schaefer, his teammate up top. Brandon Banks to make it a DBR 1-2-3 effort right now. Kyle Benson on the outside of the second row in fourth place. Craig Lounslager, we saw him chop it up through the top ten. He's inside the top five still. Adam Allishire has moved up to P6. We know his strong start uh, could be reflective with another decent run in the start of this green flag stint. And then behind them, Jesse Priest just sliding into seventh. Trevor Haley, the Indiana native in eighth. Lance Hill and C.J. Munier rounding out the top 10. How about Trevor Haley out of Indiana? Going to be really excited in about a month, Francisco, when Indy 500 month kicks off. Yeah, it's that time of year where Memorial Day weekend of races, the Monaco Grand Prix, the Indianapolis 500, and the Coke 600. Not going again this year to the Charlotte Motor Speedway, but hopefully for those that do attend, it's a lot less rainy. Yeah, that's true. We've had a lot of rained out races. Hopefully Charlotte isn't one of them. That's a, one of the great races. Monaco in the morning, you know, of course, the greatest spectacle in racing, the Indy 500 in the afternoon, and then the Coke 600 in the evening to the nightfall. Such a great racing day. It'll still be a month from now, so still some time to wait. But nonetheless, green flag raises back in the air with Lawson Peel in control. Will Schaefer given the benefit of the out going into turn one? The answer really is going to be no. He's going to stay there at the exit of turn two. Look for the crossover here to the back straightaway. He'll stick it. There he goes to the inside. Schaefer running for the lead in turn three. Schaefer has had the better of his teammate here tonight. Especially in the long run, we'll see just how long he's able to stay patient and what happens when he's able to make that move to go for the race. Obviously, Schaefer wants to win this race. Every driver wants to win the race. And for Schaefer, who's basically mathematically out of this championship battle, wants to win as many races as he can before the season's over. It's been an incredibly consistent season as Yellow Flag waves once again trouble further back. You see cars separating as they go down the back straight with possibly involving the 42 of Christopher Bishop. There you see the 17 of Craig Parkslow as well. We'll get a look here and see exactly what happened. You see Lautenslager with trouble, or actually that's Tyler Murray. They have similar cars and they see trouble for your league owner just not been the night he's wanted. That's a pretty beat up Ford Mustang and we saw the right front damage he picked up in the first run of the race and he is basically coasting this one on the apron of turns three and four. 
So look at exactly what happened in the mid pack. And this is a pretty oh. sizable accident involving the 76 of Tony Kivett. And that was right in front of Ethan Fonseca Moreno, who gives him the hit. Then Craig Rowe, then Tyler Murray. And Jaden Porter on the inside sliding out of it. That's when Murray's engine expires off of the impact. A pretty hard one in the middle of the corner. So it got really messy here, Francisco. Take us through this again. Looks like the 21 is sizing up the 76 for a move. He gets the good run off of turn four. He's going to get to the inside of Tony Kivett. He's kind of there. Looks like Kivett doesn't think he's quite there and turns into the corner as if normal. And they just kind of stack up behind him. I think that's kind of a racing deal by the look of it. I think Ethan was showing his nose, expected to get room. And uh, I think Tony Kivett probably expected the 21 not to go for that move. Here's on board with Ethan Fonseca as the run. Now at this point, you could probably say he's there, but not exactly. But it looks like the 76 got loose at the same time. Not sure. You see the, the contact damage on the 21. He's probably going to have to get that repaired. Not really sure what to make of that, Kenneth, but just probably mis mis misunderstanding between those two because it looked like one thought the other would do something and then the other thought that the other driver would do something. And then while Moreno was slowing down, there was really nothing he could do. Just gave that secondary hit to Kivitz back bumper, and here's Murray sliding Ooh. into the incident as fast as... It was, and there was the impact. Craig Rowe, the rookie driver, in just his second four-wide racing TJ's Team Series start, getting a piece of that one pretty significantly. That's an Amazon Music paint scheme that he's rolling with on his Ford Mustang tonight. Good friends with rookie Trevor Haley in the series, and he basically gets the short end of the stick, being right behind this accident. A look on board from Rowe. You see right there, just... Oh, almost had it cleared if he's able to just roll around it on the outside. Just unfortunate to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's not going to help his case. The 21 does make his way on the pit road for damage repair. You see him in the pit lane. Probably going to get some new tires. He had worked his way up and almost into the top 10, Kenneth. So another setback for the 21. And that's what happens when you get back into traffic like that. You have to work around and you have to be patient. Regardless of whether something is your fault or not, you, you just have to play the patient game. You have to get through there. You have time, and unfortunately there, just got caught up in that. And it wasn't even that big of a contact that happened with him and the and the 76, but you saw the, the hood opened up at one point. That, that, that'll that do it in, in this damage model. So he has to come in and repair that race car as best as he can, and he's going to have to work through the field again. Boy, how this race has turned ugly for Ethan Fonseca Moreno quite early. 81 laps in, we are... 20 away from being halfway home here at the virtual Dover Motor Speedway. We're in just a moment. We'll take a break as the leaders put around this one mile circuit. Miles the Monster taking a bite of a ton of playoff drivers and more. We'll take a short break and be back with more coverage of the four wide racing TJ's Team Series playoffs from Dover. Racing isn't easy. But experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com.
Welcome back to the virtual Dover Motor Speedway, the site of the sixth race in the four wide racing TJ's Team Series playoffs live on the K10 Racing Network. Glad that you're joining us from the Monster Mile. Kenneth Bueno alongside Francisco Bacchiao. And look at this, side by side for the top spot between teammates. Eric Schaefer pouncing on Lawson Peel the last several restarts. And this time by, he breaks through Eric Schaefer, the new race leader from Dover Motor Speedway. 86 laps in the books. And we documented how he's just been that little bit better than Lawson Peel for most of the night. And right here is able to go to the point, takes the lead away from Peel. As there you see Benson holding on still to third, hoping to see if he can catch up to the championship leader. Entered eight points behind Benson, hoping to try and see if he can get up and pass that 12 car and ultimately gain some more points. He was about five points away from beating Peel at Sonoma Raceway. And of course, Lawson had a phenomenal race, finished second behind the race winner, Brandon Hawkins. So it kept that gap. Pretty sizable between Benson and Lawson Peel. This is the best point of attack if you're Benson here, although he does have to worry about that Reese's Chevrolet in the background and in that rear view mirror. That's a Drinking Bros Racing team and that could, of course, affect the run of the top four, which they have slightly pulled away from fifth place. Adam Alishire and right behind him, best run of the run or best run of the race for the four car of Trevor Haley, the rookie driver out of Indiana. Just sort of going through the field as it stands and hasn't really been in the spotlight all too much, but Francisco, a pretty good start for the driver of the four car. A quiet night's the way to go, and right now he's trying to see if he can get up into the top five, and that would be one of the better runs he's had all playoffs long, so Trevor Haley hoping to be able to continue this as we move into the halfway section of this race and move on into the second half. He's hoping to keep this up. And a look on board there with the four momentarily. You saw the drivers in the top four, all of them going up to the middle lane and sort of arcing it down low to get the straightest exit off the corner. With this new over refresh update, you can experiment in those higher lanes and you can make it work. So pretty fun to see these drivers go up the track, letting it float up high and then using that grip to set them up for the exit down low. And Francisco, you know, as a driver, how do you attack this racetrack? And, and what are the different ways of attacking this racetrack that, that could make you fast? Of course, this track develops over the run as it usually does with every other track on the sim. But when you add in the oval refresh and you add in this Xfinity Series car that gained a bit of grip on behalf of that update, but it's still pretty tough to drive. Uh, what do you think of as a driver to either set up the exits or just keep the momentum around the track overall you're if you're able to set yourself for the exit of the corner you should probably did a good job at, at, of the momentum but you obviously want the exit to be well so you can attack on corner entry that's really what it's all about and rolling that middle lane is certainly going to help that especially if you could turn down like this and just keep inching towards that car in front of you using the straightaway instead of charging into the corner closing in the gap eventually you're going to have to slow down and you see right here, Benson just goes about half a car length higher. He might pull away immediately, but then right here, the 38th is going to just either hold steady or gain that little bit and get closer towards the next corner. And that's what, all, what it's all about, just moving up that little bit. I personally found success doing that, but in the long runs, you want to put that left front tire almost entirely around the apron of the racetrack, almost into the black stuff. If you see between the black asphalt on the bottom and the concrete, there's a whiter area right there. There's a whiter area. If you can put your left front there and not hit that apron, there's some unreal speed to be found there. And at Richmond several weeks ago, we saw Kyle Benson using this same strategical approach to where he would run the middle or sometimes the high side and just arc the car down low to get those left side tires either on the white line or in this case here at Dover as close as you can to the apron without touching it. Gives you the best exit to the corner and here at Dover where that wall comes up so quick saving the right front and of course making sure your car is as far away from the wall as possible on corner exit is pretty good in a deal. He still runs third and is holding up some traffic behind. Brandon Banks and Adam Alishire have caught him up on this effort to get around the second place car of Lawson Peel who runs the same line and letting Eric Schaefer pull away to the tune of about six to seven tenths of a second. There is a little mishap from Brandon Banks allowing Adam Alishire to swoop on by. Ashar is going to move up and into the fourth spot. Jaden Porter's gotten himself up into the top ten. He's now behind Lance Hill, trying to see if Porter can move up into eighth. You see Munier and Freeze just behind him. Jaden Porter doing pretty decent, trying to recover from being involved in that caution flag just a handful lots to go. Munier is actually going to get to his outside and roll past him. And Ethan Fonseca not too far behind. He's up and into the top 15. 
trying to recover from his incident as well, where he got, uh, where he was involved in that uh, previous caution with the 76 of Tony Kibbett. So these Bacayo Bueno racing drivers, they're recovering, but so far they still haven't quite gotten that track position where they're up front towards these cars they've been contending with all night. They just have to be really careful, and you brought up the point, a great one in fact, Francisco, about Moreno slicing his way through traffic, but possibly being in the way of mayhem. Porter is still in this boat. You know, while he fights with CJ Munier and a bit of Lance Hill, you know, if there's a mistake by either one of them, it could send Porter into a crash. He might just be directly involved. You really have to take those notes as you're weaving through the traffic. And here at Dover, where it can get much more difficult to move your way through drivers ahead because if a guy gets to the outside of you, he can just pinch you down there for as long as humanly possible. And you probably won't gain any ground. And then to make matters even worse, if they do get a tap of the outside wall, they're going to careen down the racetrack. Someone and where are they going? The two. Into the inside driver. Someone did off a turn two, and they were heading straight for that inside wall. Couldn't make out exactly who it was. We are side by side between Porter and Hill, who shuts the door on Jesse Preeze. He's going to go for it at the entrance of turn one. Almost got into the one as he slipped up the racetrack. Now these two go side by side to the back stretch. And Hill almost gets into the wall off a of turn two from how tight that one is. But they'll go back to turn three, still side by side. And Priest should get it here on the bottom. Hill might try the crossover, but Patrick Thompson's there, so he can't quite do it. Ethan Fonseca's moved his way up to 13th. He's going to try and close in on this group. I'd imagine if you're Moreno, you're looking at them going side by side, and you're saying, please stop. I don't want anything to do with side by side action, because if one of you makes a mistake, there. I might be there. Well, he's hoping that they stay side by side until he gets there. Then they single file out so he can get by them. Well, here's Patrick Thompson, who went around for a spin in front of Moreno to give us our first caution of the night. He's got his Chevrolet Camaro all tidied up. He moves around Hill and stays on the lead lap. So he's going to try to punch himself into the top 10 and is punching pretty considerably at his weight as there's Jaden Porter looking to the inside of a top 10 running CJ Munier. In the eight car as Lautenslager makes the effort on Trevor Haley for sixth place. And there's Lautenslager making a move on Trevor Haley as well. So they got two cars racing each other here for a position. Lautenslager very close to the side of that four car. As you see, Munir's actually closing in on these two, trying to see where he can settle himself among all this. Lautenslager does get past the four of Haley. It's going to hold up Munir just slightly. So Jaden Porter continuing to try and fight on the bottom to see if he can take this position away. But it's a very stacked group right there as it looks like Moreno gets another spot and moves up to P12. He's got to be careful here. Porter, especially in the midst of all this, Moreno is going to catch him in several laps as long as these guys stay side by side. And CJ Munier isn't really going to give this up quite easily. And then as long as they stay door to door, Patrick Thompson may have the ability to choose a lane. And more often than not, you're going to choose the outside if you can just force the driver in. And CJ Munier wow. taps the wall, almost gets a bit of Patrick Thompson. They keep it collected back to turn one. And that's going to allow the 21 to close in even more. So he's hoping that all that goes on. But once he gets there, he's hoping that it's not it's none of that, that it's able to stay single file and he can get through uh, with the better race car now that it's repaired as the 28 gets past the four car. That's going to move him up another position. So Jaden Porter recovering nicely here as we're now past the halfway point in this race. He's up to seventh. So we'll see what he's able to do with Craig Lautenslager in front of him. There's Patrick Thompson now looking to the inside of Trevor Haley off a of turn two as Moreno now has caught Jesse Freeze. And now because of these longer pit stops from both Thompson and Porter, you could also say that they have taken a fresher set of tires, which in the case they have, and they are, are pretty much faster than the competition around them as Trevor Haley looks to hold on to what's left of a top 10 running position. And he's only finished in the top 10 once throughout the entirety of these four wide racing TJ's Team Series playoffs. His only top 10 came at Daytona, which is also the location of his best ever finish in his rookie campaign of fourth. So at the Super Speedways, Trevor Haley can run well, but at these other tracks, Trevor Haley is still trying to find his mojo. He's run inside the top 15, top 10 here and there, and tonight could be a pretty solid run as Patrick Thompson makes the bid down low. It's gonna be tough for Haley to rise out of the corner with enough momentum to keep the 88 at bay. And we'll keep tabs with the battle as this moves forward. Fight for fourth. Yeah, nope. Banks and Allishire. I was going to mention, now, looking at when these guys made their most recent pit stop, Kenneth, if this race were to go green to all the way to lap 200, most of the field probably can't make it on two stops. It'll be a stretch if they do. But certainly those guys that came in, even for the damage repairs, if they took any fuel, 
That's a one stop for sure out of them. I'm just not sure if the rest of the field can perform that same one stop. And it does put them in pretty sketchy territory with all those yellows, even though it has allowed Francisco, these guys, to save quite a bit. Look up front. These guys have separated so much from the last time we checked in. Eric Schaefer up ahead by about seven tenths of a second. And as we are more than halfway throughout tonight's race at Dover Motor Speedway, let's go through the field here on the K10 Racing Network. And we will start, of course, with the head honcho up front. Eric Schaefer, his last win, came at the short track at the Indianapolis Raceway Park. And after missing Sonoma's action last week because he was on a vacation cruise, he has fallen pretty deep in the four wide racing playoffs points standings tonight he's been very aggressive he has been stout and ever since taking the lead he really hasn't backed down a sign that Schaefer still has life left in him and is going to be going to give it all that he's got when it comes to running for a championship this season he's up by seven tenths of a second with no no sign of slowing down your championship leader runs P2 just like he's had for most of these playoffs consistently running in the top three has led a couple of laps has been very quiet and is still running in the top three. That's why he's been leading the points standing the entirety of these playoffs. If he's able to come away with the second place finish, Kenneth will probably go in to Pocono Racer with a double digit points lead and looking ever so likely of winning this championship. The only other driver that Lawson peeled to taste being in the points lead is Kyle Benson, who had a five point gap to the Columbus, Mississippi driver of Lawson Peel last week at Sonoma. It extended to eight, but he is still within single digits and running considerably well. He ran out front, he's led 22 laps. He runs inside the top three, finished in the top five last week at the road course, even despite getting spun around by Joe Sanchez up the hill in one of the corners. Kyle Benson is keeping himself alive. And although he really hasn't breached that top spot in the standings, oh, he's, he's looking to get there as here he comes down pit road on the brakes. Brandon Banks is going to take over that position. And Brandon Banks has been top five all night. He has been very quiet, has not been as fast as his teammates, but he has found himself into the top five, hoping to see if he can stay top five in the overall point standings. And if this is a sign of green flag pit stops, Kenneth, that means your race leaders are probably going to be in soon. And this is not enough for them to be able to go all the way to the end of the race if they do pit between now and the next five laps. And they did because there's, I believe, Lawson Peel into the pit lane. This is just over 80 laps to go in this race. That is not enough to get to the end of the race in one tank. So they have to stop again before the checkered flag. Well, there is the 12 of Peel. And this super slow pit road speed limit at Dover Motor Speedway. Schaefer remains in the top spot, Brandon Banks right behind and Jaden Porter who's been Schaefer's able to get to in. third. There's Schaefer who brings his Chevrolet down to the pit lane. So this is basically the full kickoff of green flying pit stops. Trevor Haley's gonna join the three car in and it's all on who else is going to be next as we're side by side for third. Patrick Thompson and Craig Lautenslager having a crack at it just in front of Ethan Fonseca Moreno. And we should expect those at the front to hit pit road Although the top two really haven't considered it all that much, but everyone else behind is. There's Jesse Breeze, Craig Lounslogger, hop of the brakes. They are in this time at lap 119. I think these Bacayo Bueno racing drivers are going to stay out. They, they've already gotten themselves into a different strategy because of the incidents they're involved in. But they have, but because they've made it onto pit road under the previous cautions, Kenneth, as Banks makes his way into the pit lane, they have enough fuel to keep going a couple of extra laps to the point where they can try one more pit stop. So at this point, why not try that? And it might end up working out if it goes green. And a one stopper is in the cards. And it's also for Patrick Thompson, too, in the 88. So yes. he's with the Bacchae Albuena racing teammates. And it's like, all right, well, I guess we're on this strategy together with about 80 laps to go. They still have a solid amount of laps left in the tank, at least for Porter and Moreno. They've got another 20 that they can tack on before they come down pit road, which will get them directly at the fuel window. For Patrick Thompson, though, it is also in the same place. So these guys that are really, really great setup, if they can clock this down, and they're going to have to pray, Francisco, that a yellow doesn't really come out because then it'll set everyone straight as Lawson Peel re-emerges onto the racetrack from ninth. He is the first car a lap down and will beat everyone else out of the cycle from those that just came in. But even though, Kenneth, if a caution comes out, they're going to be hoping it does. If it's going to happen, it happens while they still haven't made that green flag pit stop because it traps the field a lap down. That means 
the current leaders will be able to come down pit road, have their service, and keep the track position. That means Lawson Field, while he will get his lap back, will have to restart behind all these other cars and have to pass them physically on the racetrack. So it doesn't exactly help him in that sense. That's if the yellow comes out before these leaders make their stop. So either way, they have another 20 or so laps. They could probably stay out there and run favorable for that reason, but favorable because if it does go green, they're going to have a lap advantage by the time these other guys make their pit stops. And they're going to hope that if a caution comes out, it's now or that it doesn't happen at all. And this is good news for J.D. Porter to Francisco because we know that Kyle Benson has spent some laps up front. We know Moreno has done the same. We know Peel has also done it. Now J.D. Porter can add some points to his resume yes. because he's up front leading some laps. Virtue of strategy, but if you're in the race lead, take advantage of it. So Porter will get some points for leading some laps as Moreno will try and charge on Patrick Thompson. There's the lap car, A.J. Green getting around. So this is good news for Bacchial Bueno Racing overall. As a look on board with Moreno as he comes out of two, looking on Patrick Thompson, who, how many times, Francisco, have we seen this 88 car in a strategy fight with a chance to win? Many. <laughs> and, and, and who knows? Imagine if today's the day. I mean, we, he's up there with these two that are trying that alternative strategy. Seems to be uh, with enough pace to maintain with these guys. And... We've seen him come up close so many times, and it wouldn't surprise me if a playoff race out of nowhere is the one that happens to go his way, but we still have plenty of laps to go, under three quarters of 100 to go in this race. It's going to be very important when they decide to bring it down pit road because that'll determine just how far they can go. I believe a fuel window here is close to 60 laps, I believe is what we were, we were seeing. If that's the case, then you're looking at hopefully them trying to get to 140, somewhere in that range. It, earliest 135, 136. If they're able to pit after that number, I think you're looking at a pretty decent shot of the one stop being able to work out. So keep in mind that number, somewhere between 135 and 140, the earliest that they can bring it down pit road and be ha and make an attempt. Here's Patrick Thompson. Of course, as we look at him from second, he is tied for eighth in the playoff point standings, one of the several rookie drivers in the four wide racing playoffs. We'll keep an eye on these top three. We know that there are some others that have yet to come down pit road. This being one of them, CJ Munier, then Michael Nubra, Craig Parks, and Ryan Pandicio. We should expect him to come down. There he is, the entry of pit road in his stall. And then it is going to cycle on everyone else. So Lawson Peel, should a caution come out, we'll get the lucky dog. Everyone else will be trapped a lap down. And Eric Schaefer is eyeing in on Kyle Benson. This will be the pass for eighth. Remember, Schaefer pitted just a couple of laps later, so he lost some ground to Benson, but he has slightly better tires right now, and Benson's going to pinch him to the bottom, so not an easy pass for the three car. Benson will hold on to that position currently on the racetrack. It's currently for eighth, and they're not a lap down. It actually looks like one of those Bacayo Bueno racing drivers made a pit stop. Actually, no, that's the 63 of Pandicio that was exiting pit lane there. So... They, those others stay out front, but Benson doing a, a pretty good job in holding on to that position knows that he has to keep the 12 car in his sights and try to stay as close as possible to minimize any damage and there's peel in the effort to unlap himself to the inside of Jaden porter benson and schaefer are rapidly approaching they really have to be careful kyle oh, benson, benson goes up the racetrack almost gave the 21 of moreno the bumper he might split it three wide with ryan pandicio on the inside they are going to go three wide moreno backs out smart call on a turn one it's getting sketchy through lap traffic yeah you don't want the yellow to come out or you don't want to be a part of the yellow it already happened for the 21 today hoping to keep this cycling as it looks like Porter may have tagged the wall. Eric Schaefer is going to go by him now as there you see now three wide with Patrick Thompson. That's going to be for the race lead as Benson closes up to the back of those two. This is the fight for the lead. Thompson on the inside, but it's not going to be enough for Porter who holds him off. Benson goes up high with nowhere else to go. Three we wide. might be three wide and we were for a second. Benson is going to back out, and he is going to be the biggest loser out of all of this. Francisco wow. trying to get through traffic. It hasn't been easy. Patrick Thompson takes away the lead, and Benson squeezes on by. Oh, my goodness. And now Porter, <laughs> wow. That's traffic with different tires for you. Look how much time he lost to Eric Schaefer and Lawson Peel. You don't even see them in the frame. Look how far ahead Peel got. That's in the entire back straightaway. That's all that the 38 lost trying to get through traffic.
On this camera shot from Eric Schaefer's v Ren, you cannot see Benson at all. You really have to squint to see him there, and it is a pretty sizable gap. And that could play taps, Francisco, later on into this race. Even though these three in Count Thompson, Porter, Moreno, and even then the drivers behind them still need to come down pit road, it will result in possible lost points for Benson, all because he just got caught up in the wrong place and the wrong time. And here at Dover, every place is a wrong place. It's not easy to make passes through lap traffic here, especially in the middle of the corner when you've got two and three ride already happening. But in the aftermath, Patrick Thompson is going to steal the race lead. You're absolutely right about that and that you can't really hide from trouble around here. But looking at these top three, Kenneth, they're, if they're able to go another 10 laps, I think they're safe. For sure, they're safe on making it on one more pit stop. And I think that's what they're trying to aim for because we're in that range that I mentioned of possibly being able to do it. And as we keep ticking off these laps, there's still no indication that they'll, br they'll bring it down pit road. Once I'm finished with my point, if you could mention the amount of laps that they're currently on in their stint, that might help us be able to understand that just that little bit better. However, considering that they're probably going to go a lap down once they do make their pit stop, they'll have fresher tires, so they'll gain some of that time back. All they're going to be hoping for is that the rest of the leaders make their pit stop. That way they get the track position in case a caution comes out late in the going. Here's the fight for 12th. As it stands, Craig Lautenslager. Went into pit road with Jesse Priest, and we know these two sort of went back and forth a little bit. Possible scares between the drivers, but nonetheless, still running nose to tail. And one of our closest fights on the racetrack. This is for position, as these two are a lap down on the racetrack. We'll keep an eye on those two as, as they continue to move around Dover, but they really haven't made a charge at each other. There's Brandon Banks on fresh tires. He'll look to get by Moreno without a hitch, and Ethan had to be pretty scared there as Kyle Benson Lawson Peel and Eric Schaefer were moving on through because it really didn't get easy for Moreno to put his place in his race car. But he's going to hold on to second over Jaden Porter, who has dropped back to third. And we are approaching the marker to which these top three can come down pit road. We know that around lap 60 to 65, Francisco, is the fuel window for these guys. It's all about when they're going to come down pit road and who's going to strike first. How long have they been on their current run? So far as they cross the line, Thompson 59, Moreno 60, Porter 61. That means they can make it to the end. We are at 60 laps to go officially. Yeah, they can make it on the final stop. But we need yes. to know how they cycle out. And of course, they're going to have fresher tires with the likes of Peel, Schaefer, and company. Is it that call, Francisco, pit now and just go for it? Pit now. You're going to lose a lap now when you make that pit stop. The earlier you can unlap yourself, you protect yourself against the caution just because you allow yourself to be on the lead lap when the yellow comes out. So now that I know I can get to the end, if I'm the 28 and the 21, bring it down pit road. There's really no big reason to keep going. You know that the rest of the field can't on one stop, but you can. Here's another playoff driver that wants Aaron. to extend this run as long as possible as his teammate comes down pit road. Michael Nubra is going to take the trip to pit road here at lap 142. So the first decisions out of your top five made by the back runners of the group. And now it's left to Thompson, Moreno, and Porter to make their Moreno decision. Moreno is slowing down, so this is his shot at coming in. Jaden Porter is already in the lane. Could the 21 have ran out down the back straightway with how slow he was? I think so. Because remember, he was ahead of Porter. And this is a couple laps ago, running behind Thompson. I think he did, Francisco, run out of gas to let Porter by. Or, or, or saving, and he's hoping to have enough power on the pit lane. Either way, he was stretching it really far. Again, didn't have to. We, we, we documented how many laps he had gone since his previous pit stop, and he had already passed the equal match. As they see him, he was saving. As soon as they got to 60 laps to go is probably when he should have pitted. He got to his stall, but how much time he lost, we're about to see as P Thompson on pit road has gotten past for the race lead. These guys have now gotten a lap down. They should be about a lap and a half down when they get up to speed. Again, they'll have fresher tires compared to Lawson Peel, Eric Schaefer, and the like of that group. So they should get by them. The question, the, they really don't want a caution to come out in the next 20, 30 laps or so. They're hoping to get themselves unlapped and that this race sees its way to the checkered flag for their hopes of the strategy working out. 
Here's Lawson Peel. No sign of saving for the 12. You could make the argument that you might be able to save it all the way to the end of the race if you try really, really hard enough, but even then you're cutting it close. So everybody knows that they do have to make that extra pit stop. They will have the fresher tires, but again, Francisco, it will come down to A, whether we get a caution flag on the racetrack, or B, how the, the lap down situation works out and, and the unlapping and how the time and distances all shake through. We do know, though, that your top five is Lawson Peel, Eric Schaefer, Kyle Benson, Brandon Banks, and Adam Allishire, who runs a race best fifth right now, even despite his fall off in the first run after running pretty highly and punching pretty high with a bunch of the other drivers around him. He's got some diamond damage on the right front of his Toyota Supra, but seems to be running around quite fine. As for those that are lapped down, Christopher Bishop is the lucky dog position in 11th. But he's got about 3.9 seconds ahead of Jaden Porter here on fresh tires. And then there's Ethan Fonseca Moreno behind. Patrick Thompson lost out big time on the rest of them. He's way behind here in 15. So those two are trying to unlap themselves from Lost and Peel. As soon as they do that, they, they're going to be safe if a yellow comes out, at least from being able to stay on the lead lap. But they're hoping that the cycle completes. They're hoping that 12th car and the three eventually all have to make their way onto pit road and give themselves the race lead. As soon as that happens, they'll be in the we'll be in a good spot no matter what. The question is, when does when do those other guys make a pit stop? They might they can go probably another 30 laps or so, but do they? Do they leave that pit stop till that late, hoping for a caution to come out and not help these guys in their strategy. How long is Lawson Peel and Eric Schaefer on their current strategies? And then you ask the question, Francisco, how long is too long, right? When is the point yeah. to where you're risking it? Is there a point in the run to where pitting would just be null and void and wouldn't make any sense? It, it depends because right now, if they were to pit, Lawson Peel would be about half a track to three quarters of the track behind Jaden Porter. And it wouldn't be that much of a tire difference. If he waits another... 20 laps, yes, he'll have a little bit of bigger, better tire difference, but he'll be lapped to Jaden Porter. So again, it's just kind of a lose-lose just because of the fact that Jaden Porter and Ethan Fonseca, they were able to pit under those cautions, and they drove their way up into the top 10 before the green flag cycle started. So it's almost as if all that had been negated, and they're simply just trying to do one less pit stop in this race. A look on board with Jesse Preeze riding in seventh. This is for lead lap position on Adam Allishire, who we mentioned earlier was running fifth. Lapslager went by, and here comes Preeze fighting hard. In the inside lane, that Diablo Chevrolet Camaro moving down low. Finished in the top ten last time we were here at Dover Motor Speedway in season five. Preeze is going to make an easy attempt on Allishire that does end up working in his favor. So Lapslager and Preeze are going to move up to fifth and sixth. They do have some fresher tires then the competition ahead by about a couple laps they know kyle benson is on lap 37 we know the lounge logger and freeze are about lap 34 on their stint and counting so maybe some of the fresh tire action could help some of the competition at the front of the field and there is patrick thompson the tertiary car to unlap himself at lap 154 and Porter did unlap himself. Moreno's now getting by Lawson Peel. So this is a huge part of their strategy of at least being on the lead lap if anything were to go wrong. You see the, the 21 up there going, trying to go around the outside of Peel. And this is huge right here. Now he's on the lead lap. If a caution comes out, he's on the lead lap. But he obviously, him and his teammate are hoping that this actually goes green. They're in prime position to finish 1-2 if this goes green. You know what? We certainly... Mailed it in for Bakayal Bueno Racing a bit earlier in this race with Moreno getting his pit road speeding penalty, then being involved in a crash in turn one with Tony Kibbett, Craig Rowe, and Tyler Murray. And then, of course, with J.D. Porter going for that slide to the inside wall with A.J. Green. All of that has enabled this alternate strategy. You could probably pose that, Francisco, as the real saving grace for these guys. Despite their bad luck early, it's starting to turn around with this strategy call. It's amazing just how something bad can turn into something good and you don't know when it's going to happen. And as the owner, obviously, I, I feel for these guys. I, I obviously would like them to do well on that side. But also, as there you see, Eric Schaefer now is going to make his way into the pit lane. He's not going to exit in front of those two. But obviously, he's trying to see if he can try some alternative strategy. And since Schaefer was the closest one to Lawson Peel, how much longer does Lawson Peel wait to pit? And there he is. So. 
That's going to give up the race lead. These guys are going to end up behind Jaden Porter and Ethan Fonseca Moreno, and they won't have that much fresher tires compared to that first run. So the question is, as we'll have about 40 laps left in this race, can Lawson Peel and Eric Schaefer gain that gap they're going to have to those two in the 28 and the 21? Jacob Bros Racing is pulling the trigger lap after lap, and now the third lap here, Brandon Banks is going to head on in to make it all three of the Drinking Bros Racing Chevrolets who have been running up front to come down pit road. Craig Lounslogger is going to stay out an extra lap ahead of Adam Allishire. They are all going to play this card and just wait it out until the end with about 40 laps to go from Dover. We do know that they cannot make it to the end of this race on fuel. So it's all about them just waiting this out for the sake of track position. And in turn, it has moved Jaden Porter to fifth, Moreno to sixth, and Patrick Thompson to seventh. And Thompson is closing back in on those two, which obviously Ethan Fonseca and Jaden Porter would love to win this race, but they're not battling Patrick Thompson. So if, if I'm one of them and Patrick Thompson gets to me, he can have the spot. As there you see Lawson Peels actually on the outside of Ethan Fonseca. That is not for position. This is to unlap themselves against this crew. So they have 40 laps to basically get a lap on these guys and actually pass them for position. It's Shades of say, Ford versus Ferrari. It's not to say that they don't have a shot. That's a, I love that reference there, Ford versus Ferrari. One of my favorite movies of all time. But it's not to say they don't have a shot, but it is going to be a long one at that. There's AJ Green in the middle of all this. J.D. Porter going to go to the inside. This is really a no-stakes pass as A.J. Green uh, sits pretty far down the charts. As he is in third, waiting to come down pit road. And we know that he will at least shuffle uh, through the field and, and not the best position that he would like as Eric Schaefer slices down the inside. Look at the difference there, Francisco. From old and new tires, it is so stark in contrast. And now that everyone else has come down pit road, it leaves Adam Allishire as the lone car to stay out an extra lap. But as soon as he does... New race leader is going to be the defending winner with under 40 to go in Jaden Porter. Lawson Peel could have a chance of getting up there. The question is, how does the traffic work out? Does the tire fall off? Equal out to the point where it actually benefits Porter and Ethan Fonseca in a battle as Alistair is going to bring it into the pit lane. But before he ever goes to the apron, Jaden Porter takes over the race lead. Ethan Fonseca will move up into second with Patrick Thompson in third. We're going to have 37 laps to go. Lawson Peel is about 20 seconds off the race lead. He'll have to gain just about half a second a lap, but with the tire difference, that's not exactly something that's out of the question of him being able to do. And at stake here, with under 40 laps to go, is Jaden Porter's first win of the season, Francisco. He struggled all season long until the regular season where he started really getting into his rhythm, but we have not seen him get to victory lane the way he did back in season five where Dover really was his best run of the season at that moment before he was able to click off the final races and get the championship after winning at Charlotte to get him into the final round. This would be his first win since that faded race at Charlotte Motor Speedway to get him into the championship five at Homestead. But Ethan Fonseca Moreno is not far away. Shades of Richmond just flipped around. How about Bacayel Bueno Racing? If they're able to get the win here today, they would sweep the the uh, concrete racetracks. But Jaden Porter, if he's, be, if he's the one that's able to win this race, it would mean that there are three main drivers for the season, each one at the different racetracks with Luke Knupp winning at Nashville, Ethan Fonseca at Bristol, and Jaden Porter potentially here. But Ethan Fonseca is not going to just hand it to him. He knows that he's just a couple of points away from Lawson Peel and a race win could just put him over the top with Lawson Peel currently in the eighth spot. Lawson is catching up to the next placed car in Ryan Pandicio. We do know that there will be lost points for Peel and this could be, if Moreno wins, a change for the points lead for the first time all postseason. It will be a big deal if Moreno can beat Lawson Peel going into Pocono, which is one of Drinking Bros Racing's best tracks. There is Kyle Benson who runs ninth, but is the first car locked down, so it goes by Moreno without a problem. Moreno knows the bigger picture situation, so he's going to let him by, and we'd assume the same for Porter here. Spenson will be under the lead lap with everyone else ahead. So we'll go to the outside here on Porter. 28 car is going to let him through, and this is going to give Moreno a chance to get a little closer. Two tenths and counting between your two leaders. We're approaching 31 laps to go. 
How aggressively are they going to battle each other again is the question we found ourselves asking at the Richmond Raceway when they were battling for the win. We found out that later after the race that the 21 was saving a little bit of fuel, which is what allowed Porter to close in the gap. But now it's for real. They know they can get to the end. Lawson feels about 16 seconds back. That difference in tires is going to slip a little bit as they start to wear on in this run. He's, again, it's about half a second a lap that he has to gain to be able to keep it up. But here we are, 30 laps to go from Richmond. Jaden Porter, the defending champion, trying to get back into victory lane for the first time in an entire season. And we know that when we talked about the point standings going into tonight's race at Dover, we virtually eliminated everyone fourth on back. And we said that Jaden Porter was really close to being on the fence, to being still mathematically eligible at a four wide championship this season. If he does get the win, that will eliminate any talk of being on the fence. He will have a realistic shot especially with the positioning of Kyle Benson and Lawson Peel. It will give Porter a way back into this thing, and he could ride that momentum all the way to Homestead, Miami, if he does so. But the challenge could start here on getting the win in the first place over his teammate. And mind you, they're still not out of the woods yet because the 88 of Patrick Thompson is still there. So any fireworks between your top two could open the door for Thompson to get his first career four wide win in his rookie season. And, and right now, where he's running right now, it would be his best finish. So, or actually, no, Darlington, I believe he got second place. So it would be his second top three finish of the season if he's able to pull this one off. Patrick Thompson's on this alternative strategy has really made it work. But looking at your top two, Kenneth, if they're there, if the caution comes out, I don't think it would be a bad thing for either one of them. I think if that happens in a handful of laps, I think we've ran enough laps where everybody would come back down pit road put on a set of tires and go racing. If that's the case, Drinking Bros racing cars don't exactly have the track position to jump them in the pit lane, assuming they don't make any major mistakes. So, well, yes, you ideally would want it to be green flag so nobody else jumps into this battle. If it does happen, you have such a gap on the rest of the field with lap cars in between, they won't be able to close that gap in entering pit road. So you can play it nice and smooth and probably exit one, two. And you're right. You've got two Drinking Bros racing Chevrolets that haven't been as strong all race long, but are splitting Lawson Peel and Eric Schaefer. It's Michael Nubra and CJ Munier who played their own respective strategy and actually was on the same strategy that Porter and Moreno were on, just pitted a couple laps earlier than these guys. So they're splitting two of the best drivers in this race if you're not looking at Kyle Benson and if you're not looking at your top two right now. The gap has crunched down again. It is within a tenth between the two Bacay Albuena Racing teammates. Moreno does have a shot, and this is the closest he has been all race long with under 35 to go. And think about this, Kenneth. 100 laps ago, these two were involved in caution flags, so it's pretty significant damage on their race cars, and they're here battling for the win under 25 laps to go, 11 and a half seconds ahead of Lawson Peel. I think they, that Lawson Peel might not have enough time to catch them if this stays under the green flag. Fonseca has a run. He's looking to the inside. He pivots into turn one. Moreno's down there for the lead with 22 remaining here at Dover. He's got He's going to give way. Moreno to the lead. What a power move on the inside. Got that run off of turn four. Carried the momentum. And good job by both of them knowing that they can't really risk each other in this situation, but they were able to keep it clean. The 21 had been closing the gap, and now he's going to try and see if he can take off and run away with it like he did in that opening run and take back what almost he lost. This is the exact mirror image of what happened at Richmond. Now Porter has to play catch up. A second place finish would be ideal, but a win here at Dover would not only cement himself as the only two-time winner at Dover in series history, but also would cement him with a decent spot in the playoffs. He's going to fall back, though. He has been running laps pretty slow in comparison to Moreno, who pulls away now to three and four tenths. Curtis Kelly on fresh tires hitting the wall isn't really going to help Porter either. And right now, Peels made himself up to the fourth position. The problem for him is that he's eight seconds behind Patrick Thompson, the next car for position. So the question is, can Peel actually catch up and make those passes? I don't think it'll exactly be easier for him at the end of this run when the tires start to wear out, especially considering Patrick Thompson's definitely gonna wanna fight for this top three. So 
It's not It's not exactly set in stone the end of this race, but it's certainly going to be a challenge for the 12. Peel's tire advantage is going to fall off, though, at some point. You have to imagine. And the difference is only 15 laps. So throughout this run, Peel's advantage, Eric Schaefer's advantage, Kyle Benson's advantage, all of that is going to go poof. And at that moment, they are going to need a yellow flag to come out to even give them a remote chance of getting the win here at Dover. They all have been strong. They've given us some good runs up front. But strategy overtakes everything here. 18 to go with Moreno out front by half a second. And think about what this would mean for Moreno if he's able to take this win here in the next 18 laps from the drama that unfolded at Sonoma. Coming back and having this recovery drive, if we're able to talk about that one as well, the trouble he went through in the middle portion of this race, and then that gave him the option to try this strategy and that he was able to work out and get in front of everybody else who tried it and get away with the checkered flag. He's going to be, feel very confident about himself and it's going to elevate his championship odds going into Pocono, a track he was pretty solid at back in the early part in the, of the season when we ran there. And he's hoping to go back there and run better than he did the first time and hopefully pose a threat for this championship. And days like today, Kenneth, are the exact kind of days where championship runs are made of. Things were not ideal for him, was involved in direct problems, was forced with damage, had to repair them. And he's right now 15 and a half slaps, laps, 15 and a half laps away from being able to put all of that to rest and able to complete a fourth win of the season. You cannot name another team in this series that has gone through the emotional roller coaster quite like Bacay Albuena Racing has. It started with Luke Knupp at the start of the season where he was able to get his first career win in Nashville Super Speedway, but then a dominating race turned sour after he crashed on green flag pit stops at Phoenix. And we know that a bunch of other races, Luke Knupp had a chances to win, but was either taken out by bad luck or what may have you, and it transferred directly over to Moreno who got his first win at Las Vegas in great fashion. Then it took him a little while to get his second win in a fantastic fight against Lawson Peel at Bristol Motor Speedway. And then ever since, it was the chase to get back to the coveted victory lane. Many races where he suffered so much heartbreak, either in the attempt to get the race lead or any other situation to where he just fell short. And Sonoma was just another addition to the pain body that has been building inside of Moreno throughout the entire season. He is 13 laps away from virtually eliminating all of that pain and taking away the playoff points lead. And this is the biggest gap, Francisco, we have seen between Moreno and Porter. Lap cars in the middle, it's 1.4 seconds. I don't know with Peel moving up to fourth if it'll be enough to take the points lead. It'll obviously move him to as close as it's been for Ethan Fonseca, at least himself, in the gap to Lawson Peel to cut it down to single digits and possibly be possibly be, be around six or seven points behind the 12 car going into Pocono. Anything inside of single digits, it's up for grabs, especially at a track like Pocono where strategy could play a, a role much similar to how it did at Indianapolis, which if that race stays green, that's another race that the 21 was very strong in in that strategy battle. And if we get an extra one of those next week, it could just play into his role again. Lately, the 21 just seems to be finding himself on the right side of these strategies. And he's trying to become the first driver to repeat as a winner in these playoffs, which certainly holds itself some bragging rights, but also goes to show peaking at the right time, was able to get the win at Richmond, a three quarter mile racetrack. This is the one mile racetrack here at Dover. And we do have another one mile racetrack at Phoenix, the penultimate race of the season, which in that race, he was able to finish in the top three. And if it wasn't for TJ Bursk and even Luke Knupp who dominated that race, that 21 was basically there all night long. So again, even though he is the rookie driver trying to go up against Goliath in Lawson Field, you can't just rule out this 21 either. He's been fast everywhere. He, and we're going back to some of these tracks for the second time where the first time he was pretty successful at too. Moreno just needs nine laps and no yellow flags. It's him and Jaden Porter who could capture Bacchial Buenos Racing's second ever 1-2 finish, just like it was at Richmond Raceway where it was this exact order. Moreno and Porter first and second. Patrick Thompson is going to be getting his best finish since Darlington where he finished in second. This is going to be a third place effort for Thompson. He could be caught by Lawson Peel before this is all said and done, but that's to say that Lawson Peel's advantage is lessening. It was from three tenths, four tenths, and now the gap 
between Peel and Thompson sits at about 4.2 seconds and Peel is only gaining about two tenths per lap. So it's only growing, it's only lessening as it moves forward with about seven laps to go. So Peel could cut it really close to getting a podium here tonight as there is Moreno. All he has to do is log down the rest of the lap traffic. Craig Parks and Craig Rowe are next up in line and all of the lap cars have been pretty generous to your race leader. There was Bishop, Curtis Kelly, Lance Hill. All of them have done a great job of staying out of the way and keeping things clean. For Moreno, he needs six more to get his fourth win of the campaign. And you see a couple of traffic and a bit of trail lap traffic in front of him. That's Craig Parks immediately in front of him. He's running the outside. Supporter so or Moreno's gonna go to the bottom here. Should get him off the corner. And as he approached five laps to go, he is hoping that there are no yellow flags between now and the next four laps. He's hoping to see that white flag because he knows he'll be safe when he gets to the line to start that final lap of this race. And looking elsewhere on the race, Shakai Benson is staying in that eighth spot, has not made any advancements. So he's up, he's going to lose second place in the standings easily to your current race leader. As you see Benson stuck in eighth right now, he's gonna fall to third in the point standings most likely when the race is over here. And Ethan Fonseca, with this win, will at least jump into second. What that gap ends up being after the race, we'll just have to see what Tyler Murray has to say about that. And here's Michael Nubra with CJ Munier running sixth and seventh. How about the great run by these two? We know that Michael Nubra is pretty far out when it comes to making the four wide racing championship possible in his eyes. But still running in a nice top ten run. And CJ Munier, who we really haven't uttered his name all throughout much of tonight, He's running in that position and is about two seconds ahead of Kyle Benson, who, like you said, Francisco, sort of stranded in eighth place with Brandon Banks about eight tenths behind and trying to catch up. This is the largest in distance we have seen the field here at Dover. We had our first round of green flag pit stops interrupted by a Patrick Thompson yellow. But ever since, it's gone green after a couple more yellows. And this is how it all turned out with the incidents to start. Moreno and Porter, involved in both of them, have recovered seamlessly through trips to pit road and just finding themselves in a place where they could have a longer run than everyone else. Moreno will capture the white flag here at Dover Motor Speedway. There are the lapped machines and Christopher Bishop and Lance Hill getting around. Jaden Porter is a second and five tenths away from Moreno this time by. It looks too far to make an impact on this race. And it will be the second ever Bacay Albueno Racing 1-2 finish with Ethan Fonseca Moreno on top again. His second win of the playoffs and BBR stays undefeated on the concrete. Checkered flag, Moreno wins at Dover. And that kind of drive right there, Kenneth, is the one you talk about if this 21 is able to complete this championship run. Days like today where you get involved in controversy and drama and you're able to put that behind you and go to work and bring home the race win at the end of the day. Jaden Porter comes up to him and congratulate him on this hard fought team victory. Both of them with trouble and they're here finishing first and second like they did at Richmond. This time though, Ethan has enough fuel for a burnout. And there you see them going around the racetrack together celebrating this win and they're very close with each other Kenneth they're some of the teammates that hang out the most outside of the the sim they play games together they hang out a lot and they have a lot of respect for each other and they push each other to be better so to see this support from each other is definitely what you want to see out of an organization and they're doing a, a lap together to commemorate this Ethan Fonseca Moreno Jaden Porter looking up the entire BBR squad that was there at Sonoma last week all united in grief for Moreno after he was held up by Daniel Michel, then got hit as he, Michel, and Lawson Peel were entering turn 11. It took Moreno back to third. It kept him behind the playoff points leader. And Moreno, after that interview, said, I have nothing positive to say about tonight. And after the emotional roller coaster that has been this entire season, Moreno finds his way back to victory lane in a miraculous strategy call after bad luck early between himself and his teammate. And for the fourth time this season and second time in the playoffs, 
Ethan Fonseca Moreno will visit Paul's setup shop, Victory Lane, from the Monster Mile. And Jane and Porter helping him with those dual burnouts. You can tell that the emotion's there, they're confident, and they should be after a race like today where they're able to perform this strategy after getting the hand they were dealt. And they go to the racetrack where strategy is the name of the game. They're hoping to be able to pull that one off in a week's time and really cement themselves up in the front. They're going to put the hoods together on those race cars and burn it till it, it doesn't last anymore. And Ethan Fonseca, win number four on the season for the rookie driver. Fantastic effort from him. He ties with Brandon Hawken for second most wins of the season. And both of them tacking off their fourth wins of the campaign in back-to-back -back races. Sonoma for Brandon Hawken and now Dover for Ethan Fonseca Moreno. This is a big one for him. After getting it at Richmond, it meant a lot. I think tonight might mean even more in the chase for the four wide racing TJ's Team Series Championship. Let's get you through your entire running results here from Dover, Delaware and up top. It is the number 21 of Ethan Fonseca Moreno, his fourth win of the season and second in the postseason. Jaden Porter makes it a Bacchial Bueno Racing 1-2 for the second time in team history. Patrick Thompson, you have to give him credit. Even though he was involved in the first yellow, he rebounded and rallied back on the same strategy that your top two finished on. Thompson ends up on the podium. We'll talk to all three of them before we wrap up our coverage tonight. Lawson Peel with a fourth place effort. Might be on the edge of losing the points lead. We'll take an eye on that once we wrap up interviews and get our post-race coverage started. Eric Schaefer to round out your top five. Michael Nubra, CJ Munier, sixth and seventh, with Kyle Benson moving up to eighth. Brandon Banks and Jesse Prees round out the top ten. That is about six of the Drinking Bros Racing cars inside the top 10 at the end. So continuing the success of Dover, although it wasn't a race win. Craig Lounslager going to be in 11th, one lap down with Adam Alishire behind him in 12th. Ryan Pandicio in the 63 comes away as 13th, 14th to AJ Green. And you look down this order, Francisco, and you see so many other drivers a lap down or more, just guys that really didn't get the best end of the stick on strategy. Yeah, there was, we saw different strategies play out there. Some tried the same strategy as the leaders and Others just didn't have this, the, the same success. We saw AJ Green get involved in the same incident as Jaden Porter. Jaden Porter finished second, but AJ Green, not the same luck, was able to finish 14th. You see Lance Hill down in 16th, Craig Parks in 17th. You see Trevor Haley, who had a good run going early on, wounds up 19th. Not exactly sure what happened to the four car. Greg Rowe rounding out your top 20. And there's everybody 21st on back. We start with Tony Kivett who is 24 laps down. Then behind him, the league owner, Tyler Murray, who took a, a massive shunt into one of our biggest crashes of the night involving Moreno, Tony Kivett, and Craig Rowe. Colin Forrester ends up 127 laps down. We know he was involved in an incident with AJ Green and Jaden Porter. 24th is Kevin D'Elia, Brandon Gillis in 25th, and one of the drivers that did not make the green flag once more, Cody Kinsey in the number two machine. Well, it's our chance to talk with the driver occupying Paul's setup shop, Victory Lane, for the fourth time this season and second ever time in the four wide racing TJ's Team Series playoffs. We get a chance to talk with the man behind the wheel of the number 21. It is Ethan Fonseca Moreno as the league owners look under review for the finishing order. We'll get that done for you in just a couple of moments. But to talk with Ethan and Paul's setup shop, Victory Lane... This time, the boom has a positive note to it. Ethan, how about this race? We knew after Sonoma, you told us that there really wasn't anything positive to say about that race. And tonight, it looked like a strong run turned sour for you that might have just ended with another poor finish because you were involved in an incident with the pit road speeding penalty, then involved with Tony Kivett and all that. How do you feel now? What are the feelings? I know we know the race is under review for now, the finishing order, but... Walk us through your emotions, how you're feeling after this win. Yeah, that was, I, you know what, I, I can say we, we definitely earned that, that stuff right there. I was about to say curse word, but um, yeah, me and Jaden, uh, we definitely got uh, screwed there at the beginning. But, uh, you know, we, we came up with the strategy. He came up with the strategy, actually. I, I credit to him on that. That was that was brilliant right there of him. I wasn't even thinking of it. I thought we were going to 
you know, sell for a top 10 or something. But, um, yeah, props to him on that. Um, the whole incident with the 76, I don't know. I don't know what he was thinking. Uh, I was definitely faster, had a run on him. Uh, Going to take the bottom. Um, it's just lack of racecraft, I guess. But whatever he had to say, just take whatever he had and uh, shove it where the, where the sun don't shine. But uh, anyways, yeah, I'm proud to take this win. This is what, what we needed going into the uh, next three races. And that strategy seemingly came out of nowhere. We probably weren't really expecting it until we sort of caught on that everyone else still had to make at least two more stops, but you guys could get away with just one. What was the team contact like between you and Jaden Porter at that time to where you guys understood, all right, we can just make it on one more stop. Did you feel an extra sense of security or was it still on edge from that moment up until the end of the race? We were thinking, well, it was close on fuel. I, I, uh, we had to save about like a lap or two, so um, we just weren't sure if our pace was good enough to stay in front of those guys. But uh, once we uh, saw that they didn't pass us uh, or even come close to us when we were pitting uh, for a position, um, we were like, we we're thinking, you know, it, it's, we have a good shot. But um, Lawson's fast, of course, so um, we we were still on edge, kind of on. How we were doing on pace and we wanted to make sure we had to save our tires to the end there to you know make any last push but um wasn't the case there uh we got a pretty comfortable uh gap to those guys so um yeah it was a good strategy there as of now you are the only driver in the playoffs to win more than one race in this playoff stint of course richmond one of them with your teammate porter finishing behind you and tonight the exact same clause and this team remains undefeated on the concrete tracks you taking two concrete ovals this season with bristol and now tonight at dover what does that mean for you to get more than one win in the postseason and to get it when you possibly need it the most um more concrete tracks that's that's all i ask <laughs> Well, I don't know if we'll get more of them. I wish probably we would, but nonetheless, a huge win at Dover Motor Speedway. Ethan, your final thoughts on this win and anybody you'd just like to thank for the W? Yeah, I would like to thank uh, my team, team owners, teammates, uh, or teammate, I guess, that's here with me t uh, tonight. But um, yeah, it was a great team win tonight. So, um, you know, I'm glad that we got to work with each other there and uh, bring home another one, too. Well, Ethan, on behalf of all of us at the K Bueno Racing Network, congratulations on to the win. We know things are still unofficial, but as of now, you are the winner here from Dover. So congratulations, and we'll see you at the Tricky Triangle next Wednesday. Yep, see you then. Ethan Fonseca Moreno is unofficially the winner. We do want to emphasize that at the moment, league owner Tyler Murray, the admins are looking over the end of the race in the running order. So everything is still unofficial for now. Once we do get official word, from them we will let you know but until then we'll turn to second place where it is Ethan Fonseca Moreno first Jaden Porter his teammate second Francisco you've got him well Jaden Porter it wasn't the race win at least at the moment with everything being reviewed it's a currently a second place finish for you yeah you, you, you got involved in the incident much like your teammate did you were involved in some incidents and you posed the strategy there of trying this one stop under that green flag run and it happened to work out it got you a P2. Did you have anything else that you could have possibly offered to win this race? Uh, Take care of my right front a little bit better. Uh, I think I abused it a little too much trying to get my lap back because I was, I was honestly afraid a caution was going to come out. And I wanted to stay on the lead lap, and I probably burnt my right front off. My damage didn't help. Uh, that was a bad mistake by me early in the race. I was overdriving, trying to get some spots back, and got into the 48, got him loose, and I, I didn't have anywhere to go, so... Apologies to them. But I had a good race. Uh, early in the race, I had really good long run speed. Uh, was one of the fastest cars, honestly. Was probably second fastest to Ethan on that long run. And uh, right before pit stops, got into a little scuffle with the three. Obviously, he's still a little butthurt about uh, Richmond. But, you know, it's whatever. I'll remember what he did. So we'll go on to Pocono, I guess. You mentioned Pocono there, Jaden, and that's a track where we've seen you perform pretty decently at in the past. And this second place finish is going to help you 
uh, kind of gain on that points lead. It keeps you alive in this championship punt. So as you approach these final three races, what is the mentality as you approach these races? What are you trying to aim for to try a last second effort to win this championship again? Honestly, I got to continue doing what I've been doing this pl these playoffs. Uh, we've I've had good speed these playoffs besides maybe rocking. It's been probably my worst track out of these playoffs. Uh, we just got to continue these top fives. You know, these top fives do a lot. You know, we got to beat Lawson Peel, which going to Pocono, he's really good at Pocono. So that's going to be a tall task next week. Uh, we're racing on my birthday next week. So that should hopefully that will give me a little bit of luck. Maybe I'll catch a strategy like this and hopefully be the only one on it this time. But uh, yeah, we'll go on to Pocono, try to get a top five and uh, continue trying to gain that points lead. Well, we wish you a happy early birthday. I'll make sure to send the cake to you. <laughs> Uh, delivered at the racetrack just before the green flag. You can have a nice little slice there, and hopefully that gives you enough energy to go out there and race for the win. But, Jaden, on behalf of everybody here, what, who was a part of being able to make this effort possible, this comeback drive possible? Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, teammate Ethan, obviously you, Kenneth, and, Fran and Francisco. Uh, Ethan kept me in the race all race. I got a little frustrated after a few incidents, but he kept me in the race all race. Uh it was kind of my idea with the strategy, so I'm taking credit for it. But uh, also, thanks to Splash and Go Graphics. I know I didn't run his car tonight, but he makes he made Ethan's car tonight, and he made mine. So thanks to him for the schemes. Uh, my brother and his friends for watching, and uh, Tyler for running this league. So We appreciate the time you take with us, Jaden. And again, happy early birthday to you. We'll see you next week, and we wish you luck going into Pocono. All right. Thank you, man. That's Jaden Porter capturing just his third career podium in the Season 6 4 Wide Racing TJ's Team Series. So it really has turned up over the last several weeks, especially with Richmond on the table as well. We'll turn to third place where we will catch up with Patrick Thompson. Patrick, welcome back to the podium. It has been a little while, but you had a really good run tonight. Pretty strong Chevrolet Camaro. What was the rebound like from the incident to bring out our first yellow coming out of pit road and then working your way as hard as you were to get a top three finish tonight? Yeah, I wasn't expecting to uh, get where I am now from that. I thought it was uh, kind of a big reset, but I guess it worked out at the end. It's one of those you have to kind of trust it and just keep going with it. Don't ask questions. It was one of those. And... Uh, I'm glad uh, Jaden and Ethan were on the same page. Uh, we kind of just stuck together the whole time. Um, but yeah, that, that spin was not my uh, proudest moment, but it worked out. Certainly did with Porter Moreno. You guys also had a couple more drivers that joined you on that strategy. And I asked Ethan this, and I'm going to ask you the same. When you realized that you could at least make it on one more stop and that the strategy was pretty viable, what were your thoughts? How, what was the thought process in all of that? And did you feel any sense of security in that? And, and when did you really notice that you were able to make it on that final stop and sort of gave you that revelation? Yeah, so I wasn't really sure for a little bit. Um, I knew that I could do one less stop than most of the pack, but I wasn't sure if my speed was going to keep me where I needed to be. But I would say... Once everyone else started pitting, because I don't know what lap it was, but once Peel started catching me a little bit, I was kind of just eyeing it for a while, and I, I figured he was going to slow down a little bit, and once I started seeing his time uh, gain slower and slower, I was okay. Like I think it was probably 165, I felt pretty good, I just needed to keep the car together. Um, I wasn't the fastest. My tires were pretty uh, crappy, I'd say, but I was pretty comfortable by 165, 170. And obviously another great finish for you, and we've seen a lot of strength from you strategy-wise, but just raw pace-wise near the end of these events, we know that Michigan, you had a chance at a strategy win. We know that Darlington, you were right there with Craig Lounslager to the end. Another third-place finish. What does this mean for you tonight at Dover as we go to crunch time in the postseason? We head to Pocono, Phoenix, and Homestead next. What does this mean from here on out to keeping the momentum going in the coming races? Well, it definitely is a big bounce back from last week. I really needed this one bad. 
Uh, I'm not really good at road courses, so last week was rough for me. Um, I don't really see myself going too far, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it my my all these next couple of weeks just to keep the momentum that I got from this race alone. Uh, I think I finished pretty good at Pocono last time, so I'm hoping I can do the same thing, get another top ten. Um, and then Phoenix will probably be a little rougher. I'm not great there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it my head high, and keep going as fast as I can, try my hardest. Well, Patrick, we really appreciate the time. Before we let you go on this P3 interview, anybody in particular you want to thank for making this all happen? I would love to thank you guys. I love watching the stream the next day every week. It's, it's I love watching it while I'm eating food. or It just gives me something to do, and it's really enjoyable. So you guys do a really good job. Um, I want to thank uh, Tyler for everything that he does for the league. Um, I want to thank Jaden for getting me into the league in the first place. And I want to thank Mikey Neal for teaching me pretty much everything I know about iRacing. He's been my mentor. So, Well, Patrick, we really do appreciate the time. As always, congratulations on the third place finish. And we really appreciate those kind words as well. It was great seeing you running up here with the strategy and getting another great finish to your rookie resume in this series. And hopefully we get to see you at Pocono next Wednesday. <laughs> yes, sir. Have a good one, guys. That is Patrick Thompson, driver of the number 88 to finish in third. We have some big news to break on behalf of league owner Tyler Murray and the admin team. Ethan Fonseca Moreno will get his win revoked tonight from Dover Motor Speedway. Jaden Porter will indeed be credited the win tonight. It will be his first of the season. And as to explain it and what exactly happened, Ethan Fonseca Moreno, after the spin ahead by Patrick Thompson coming out of pit road, Ethan said to the race admins in the session that he lost the Lucky Dog candidacy per iRacing because he got the avoidance of the wreck and it was due to an unsafe exit out of pit road, which is what we thought was the case. However, he did lose the Lucky Dog because he made contact with the spinning Thompson, so therefore he, at that point, was not supposed to get that lap back meaning it wouldn't have put him in the spot to get his lap back and, of course, create the strategy to win the race. So as a result, he will be given a post-race penalty and will be scored one lap down from where he finished, meaning that Jaden Porter will capture his first win of the season and will go two in a row here from the Monster Mile. Francisco, your thoughts. This is a huge story building, and this only adds to the emotional roller coaster that Moreno is going through this season. Just unreal uh that that penalty that's going to play huge and i mean huge impacts on this championship battle going forward really it's it really helped lawson peel big time there uh where where he thought he was probably going to lose points on a on a championship rival but it's actually going to result in him gaining on kyle benson who will maintain the second place position so Lawson Peel most likely, whenever they get the points done, they, they haven't quite done it yet. But Lawson Peel is probably going to exit with a double-digit lead going back to Pocono on Kyle Benson, Ethan Fonseca. Wherever he lost, wherever, whatever he gained, he's going to lose more than what he would have lost. And that's probably going to put a nail in his championship. We want to turn back the clock and give you the replay of the incident that we're talking about that was under review by Race Control. So here is Patrick Thompson. Coming out of pit road ahead of Moreno. This is under green flag stops. And this was technically our first caution of the night. Thompson going for the spin. This is what was under review by race control. The small amount of contact from Moreno to Thompson. iRacing would give you an unsafe exit because he went above the apron onto the racing surface. But because he was ripped away of his lucky dog candidacy because of the incident, he pleaded that... He just got an unsafe exit, which means he could be cleared to get his lap back. But because he made contact with the spinning Thompson, he technically was involved in the incident, meaning he would not get his lap back in this scenario, which is the content of debate. And that's exactly what race control deemed was enough to revoke Moreno of the win and should, like you said, Francisco, give him a large hit in the point standings as well. Yeah, you see on board here with... Ethan, he sees the incident happening, sees it a little late, and you see it almost looked like it was net code to some extent there. I think seeing it from above would probably give it the best view. Just to get a slow view of it, 
because in real time it's hard to tell. But here, as they get off of the apron, that's where Patrick Thompson starts accelerating, and that's when he starts to spin. And he, like I said, Ethan sees it just a little, a tad bit late, and he tries to go around it at the last second, not wanting to get that unsafe pit exit, but obviously sees the 88 in his path, and that's the only place to go. So you're going to see the 21 serves at the last second. Right around here, you see he's going to turn right, and it, it's just barely, Kenneth. That is certainly a judgment call, and you, you hear there, that's exactly what the admins decided to go with. Another look this time from Thompson. So this is him exiting pit road. And we want to give you an exact quote from what Tyler Murray told us in broadcast chat. He says, quote, he lost the lucky dog pro I racing due to contact with the wrecking car, not by an unsafe exit. He received warning in race that if it wasn't an accurate lucky dog, he would face a post race penalty. Therefore, Moreno will be scored one lap down from where he finished. So it wasn't necessarily that. He would get his lap back because he could have gotten his lap back with the yellows that transpired following Thompson's spin. But of course, it was because he inaccurately reported it as an un unsafe exit instead of his actual involvement in this crash with Thompson. But Francisco, again, like you said, it is so minimal. It's such a close call. And we knew that there was some contact between the two, but we also presumed in a way that it would be waved off as him just trying to avoid the incident. And there was not much he could do because Thompson is around. You're trying to get up through the gears and up to speed. So it really is a close call that Race Control had to take a really sincere look at. But that is the decision from the four wide admins and league owner Tyler Murray who calls all the shots here at this series. That will be the official decision from Race Control. Ethan Fonseca Moreno will not be the winner here from Dover Motor Speedway. Instead, it will be Jaden Porter that will enjoy uh, the race win coming out of tonight, which, Francisco, I don't think is a win for anyone at Brock Gael Bueno Racing because Jaden Porter knew that he got a second-place finish. He felt good about it going into Pocono. He knows that it's a win tonight now off the decision from race control, but it's certainly tainted. As a driver, you, you don't also want to win it that way. You want to be the first one across the finish line, and, and, and Jaden thought that that was his teammate but now finding out post race that he'll actually get the trophy and the points it's kind of bittersweet you you, you 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 hate being the other side of that and if you're ethan you're you're gonna feel awful about that and now it's gonna really hamper his championship uh position moving uh towards pocono it's gonna put him behind the eight ball and that's probably going to at least for now unless something crazy were to happen at pocono make it a two-way a fight at the top between Benson and Peel. So with that, we'll look at the unofficial point standings before tonight. Again, just to re-emphasize, this is the point standings before we drop the green flag, just to give you a little extra context. If you weren't around at the start of our broadcast here from Dover, it was a 2,224 point total for Lawson Peel, the season four champ. It was only eight points separating him and the next car in line, Kyle Benson. There is where Moreno sits, 13 points out of the point standings lead. That's where he is coming into tonight. Out of it, it might just be a much bigger number. And with Porter getting this win, plus leading laps, that will, of course, give him the opportunity of putting himself back into the championship contention. So it'll really be a toss-up as to what happens coming out of Pocono. We do know that the league owners and admins are still trying to decide the points and to upload them as the order is influenced because of this post-race penalty so there is a lot to discover uh, from here up until Pocono next Wednesday which speaking of that will be our next race Lawson Peel was the winner last time we were there we'll have the coverage for you next Wednesday April 17th at 9 p.m. Eastern and you can find it right here of course on the K Bueno Racing Network YouTube channel Francisco final thoughts from Dover as we head on to Pocono Full-on playoff drama has finally hit, and it, we won't be short of it in the next coming races. Pocono with all sorts of strategy going on there. Ethan Fonseca once again has to try and find something, and he's probably going to have to win these remaining races to get back into this championship fight after the decisions being made here tonight. Well, as soon as we get more word on any updates from the point standings and the playoff situation, we will let you know from here up until Pocono. And once we get to the Tricky Triangle next Wednesday, we will have a ton of storylines to tell you on a constantly updating playoff drama 
and ends here at Dover Motor Speedway and transfers over to the next race. That will do it for our coverage of the four wide racing TJ's Team Series playoffs. On behalf of Tyler Murray and everyone from the admin team and race council in four wide, for Charlie Byer, Keelan Belsha, and everyone at the Cable and Racing Network, and for my colleague in the booth tonight, Francisco Bacayao, I'm Kenneth Bueno saying so long from the Monster Mile. A lot of drama late after the checkered flag. We'll have Pocono be crazy just like this one was in one week time. But until then, congratulations to Jaden Porter on his first win of the season. And we'll send a good night.